No, Sergio's Sir, going next? like S- he's connecting the stars, and it's going S E R G. I start naming yeah. constellations after myself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> plenty of painter. Uh, best. I trace a ribbon in the sky. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> blue ribbon. Not just a ribbon, a giant blue ribbon. Yeah. <laughs> or number one. I like how the sky is dark blue, like my <laughs> ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, uh, welcome to Waiting to Dry. It's a podcast that doesn't claim to be the plein air podcast, but uh, here we are out in the field. Not too many other podcasts can say that, can they? Yeah, I don't see any around. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, yeah, I'm Sergio Lopez. My typical co-host, Joshua Lawyer, is back in California, and I'm out here in Mary Hill, Washington, camping out with my best buds. I got a... Zavu and Anton Pavlenko. Hi. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks guys for doing this. Took a, a little bit of a of a effort <laughs> to make it happen, but now that we finally don't have anything to do, it's uh nice to relax a bit here and get the podcast going. So we're here uh because of uh we're doing the Pacific Northwest Plein Air event and you guys have all done it multiple years as well, so um yeah it's been fun like we've made it a thing of our own basically that we've we've uh we don't even really care about selling or awards or any that's because there isn't that, any yeah exactly <laughs> you've gotten awards uh, well, okay, okay. Even... i've been talking about the selling part <laughs> oh that's yeah, true some sales <laughs> oh, yeah some <laughs> buddy else <laughs> No, for sure. It's kind of turned into this beast uh, of its yeah. own. And uh, when do we get the idea to start camping? I think it's like we used to try to get some hotels. Or I used to day trip yeah. out here when it was still in Hood River. At yeah. The, at the, at yeah. the other venue. We used to exactly, drive out yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Well, when they first started, they hosted us. Did you ever do it when they hosted no, you? No, I, th- yeah. I didn't do it the first few years. Right, and then, like, right. I think I, I applied when I, when I got in the first year for me. It was like everybody's talking about last year. It's like, oh, we were put up <laughs> yeah. in a house last year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Like, here we are, like, looking for our own lodging, like, whatever. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, I'm so glad that they did that because what happened is by the time I first met you, mm-hmm. we met at that uh, breakfast place, whatever it is. Right, the we, B&B, B&B in, yeah. in downtown Hood River, yeah. And I remember that was, like, the coolest thing. All of a sudden, we're forced to, like, come together. It's better than hosting because when somebody's hosting you, you only see the host. Right. Here we see the artists, all exactly. of the artists. Exactly. It was that old house where yeah. we had like got rooms for like 20 bucks a night or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was amazing. Awesome. Yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And weren't you and Sergio room, roommates at the time upstairs or something no, like that? No, it was me and Mike Orwick. Yeah, yeah. Ah. And I was right across the hall. I got my own room because I thought, I think Anna was coming later. Right. And um, so it just made, made more sense like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the, you got to keep your, the mic closer to oh, you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that was the first time that I felt like, wow, look at the camaraderie. I mean, this mm-hmm. is... This is this is this is what it's about. That it woke me up to the idea that it's about building friends and it's mm-hmm. about making memories long after the event. And yeah, exactly. after that, we've been like trying to hook up and just mm-hmm. go camping or whatever it is that we want. Mm-hmm. It's so much mm-hmm. cheaper too. Yeah, it yeah, really is. Yeah. <laughs> It's a lot of, yeah, it's probably the main reason that made us start going camping. Yeah. yeah save yeah. some money. Exactly. Oh, but it's so much more rewarding than any B&B ever could be. What do we do every day around noontime? Go for a swim. Go for swim. a swim. <laughs> yeah. The famous uh, swimming sessions we have now. <laughs> oh, it's like, a, it's like a part of the routine. Mm-hmm. You know, if we don't exactly. swim, we feel like the day is not complete. Mm-hmm. Even if I do it in the middle of the mm-hmm. night by myself. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> like last night. <laughs> like last night. <laughs> I think Pavani and then were so scared, I got swept away. Mm-hmm. And they, every five seconds, they kept calling, Zah! Zah! I'm like, <laughs> well, we couldn't see you. <laughs> He's like, is that? Yeah, we're all really worried. We, you had that really peaceful look in your eye, as if like you're, you know, you're at one with with nature? yourself and nature, and like, oh, I think that's it. This, this is the end. <laughs> I think she, I you know, think I worked really hard us. on that. <laughs> I was like, well, who, where did that seal come from? What did it do with that? <laughs> yeah. 
Exactly. All I kept thinking is, does sharks swim this far inland? And I'm yeah. like, nah, the dales would have caught it. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, the dam, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Shark food. Man, every year we, I look forward to this. It's a week long or sometimes mm-hmm. a little bit longer. Like the event ends technically, typically Friday. Mm-hmm. We always stay till Sunday because we just hung out, cook, and just bond and just talk about endless stories in between you and Anton. Yeah. <laughs> There's like endless that jokes. Was a moth, guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I blew blew on something on yeah, that. We're outdoors. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is like the best. Yeah. yeah. No, that's the best part about doing this now is the just like bonding and like mm-hmm. not even worrying about how the show is going to end up. And usually that ends up making paintings better. Actually, when you're not stressed out about yeah, it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I, we just I kinda agree. St- stick close to where we're camping and mm-hmm. just hanging out. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and. Yeah, it's a lot of driving around, but we're we're also familiar with this area now. I've been coming up here for mm-hmm. like six, seven years now. Seven years, right? Yeah, then you guys pretty much live in this area. Yeah, yeah. you could always find something. It's just driving up and down the river. Yeah. Endless. Exactly. Was it eighty-four mile stretch? Yeah, something, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we're if people don't know, we're east of Portland right now. Say what, like eighty miles? Probably yeah, something like that. Eighty, or maybe probably even more. a little bit more. Really? More. Yeah. Yeah. It's a couple yeah. hours east of. Portland mm-hmm. Drive. Yeah. And uh yeah, there's just gorgeous scenery all the way across the the uh the road there and uh you start with all the greenery and the waterfalls and then uh-huh. you, you get to Hood River and it becomes like a mountain mountainous area and then you go even further it looks like the old west yeah. as far like the grand canyon. Far we get, yeah. yeah, kind of. Yeah. Like a gray grand canyon. And by the time you make it out here, you got wildfires burning <laughs> Exactly, <our> yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah. Oh my God! Talk about that. That's yeah. crazy. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, a few days ago, there was a wildfire right next to the venue that we're showing our, our work at, the Mary Hill Museum, and uh, so Anton and I were out painting, um, probably what an hour uh, northeastish or, or northwestish yeah, yeah, yeah. of here. Glenwood. Yeah. Glenwood. And uh, so yeah, on our way back, it was probably what four thirty or so that we're going through, and uh, we saw. Uh, a bunch of uh, fire. Well, actually, not even a bunch of fire trucks yet that were stopped. We just yeah. saw that there was a a fire. Sort of, it almost looked like it was just getting put out, or they were just uh-huh. on their way to put it out. And it didn't look all that menacing at the time. Yeah, and I felt like the uh, there's just a few firefighters kind of casually getting out. Yeah. I even thought maybe it was like a there control no burn. Urgent. Yeah, yeah was like, that's wow. I thought. Like maybe they're just was, like removing yeah. some brush by the exactly. road. It's are really early coming back it, from Yeah, it. totally. Well, yeah, and then we just, just keep driving. It's another like, you know, 15, 20 minute drive back uh-huh. to uh, our campground. And I just right. keep seeing more fire trucks going and going. And I'm like counting half a dozen. Like, are they all going to that little tiny brush <laughs> fire? Yeah, exactly. Well, by the yeah. time we came along, which is closer to five, uh-huh. they had already closed the road right at the Dells. And mm-hmm. so they rerouted everybody across the bridge. Highway 14 here in Washington. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. And by then, it had already burned a mountain and a half. Mm-hmm. Like it had gone up the valley, down the valley, and climbing up the other valley. And that yeah. day, the wind was so strong. Yeah, it was blowing hard. Yeah, it was. That's really what carried it uh-huh, so quickly. Uh-huh. We are about mm, 35 to 40 minutes away from that brush fire. Yeah. And by 10 o'clock that night, it was right up the hill from where we're camping. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we saw it. And the sun goes down. We can see it from our campsite. Just yeah. that, that yeah. line, the fire advancing. Yeah. The hills. Yeah. It was pretty wild. But apparently you two weren't that scared because you went to bed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you, were, you guys were going to paint it, so you, you would keep we'll a lookout for us. You're right. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Wake us up if before you guys start burning. So. <laughs> yeah. We figure we'd actually just get your tent, grab it, and drag you to the water's <laughs> exactly, edge, yeah. toss you toss in. Toss us in, yeah. Just pre-soak the tents for <laughs> us. Had you lost the donut yet? Because you could have put us on the donut. Oh, oh yeah. Man. Man. Talk about the donut. <laughs> I am Every so year, so man, we lose a donut. We a Every float. year. And we lose yeah. a floaty. Yeah. Last year, it was what, your pink donut or your blue donut? The yellow one. Yellow oh, the one. yellow one. It's always one. the yellow one. Oh, it's <laughs> The yellow ones are runners. <laughs> It's so, a yellow floating donut. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, the Columbia Gorge is kind of known for all the wind sports yeah, on the water. Exactly. Uh-huh. So when you go swimming, it the wind is always just ripping. Oof. I mean, that's what most it's of known the time. For. Yeah, yeah windsurfer. And so last year, Sergio and I were uh, sharing these inflatable 
little inner tubes. Inner uh-huh. tubes. And Sergio was passing one over to me, and it slipped out of his hands, and I couldn't, I, I, I wasn't fast enough to grab it. Yeah. And we just saw the thing just like just skid across race and the, skid the and surface. flip down yeah. Yeah. the Columbia so just out of quickly, sight. Yeah. yeah. It was just like gone. Wow. There was no catching it. Yeah. And then this year, what, <laughs> what happened? Well, this year I just bought this donut and it's literally a giant donut that a person could sit in. It's got pink sprinkles and everything. And we blow it up. We stuff it in Michael's car. We drove it to the waters front and it's got this like little Olympic size pool where they have those little, what do they call it? Like the floaties. The little that, buoys. There's the like little a little buoy, uh, yeah, line. Kind of like a swim area that's yeah. kind of restricted so for kids So we had walked whatever. over, we put the donut down and all our bags down and the wind just slightly picked it up and the donut fell into the kiddie pool. We're like, ah, <laughs> oh, we'll get it. Yeah, know? exactly. Well, Sergio was already in the water. I started to go after it, but I was too slow and the thing kept speeding up. And then mm-hmm. we're like, Anton, go get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then I saw, like, well, it's not going to leave the little uh, buoys, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. protector. I swear that thing you had a mind Michael of its took own. Your time. Yeah, so I'm, I started walking around the shore, yeah, and then yeah. I noticed that there's a break kind of where the buoys end and they go up. Yeah. And there's that, like this little four foot gap where the, where the little inflatable donut well, can escape. And where sure and I were standing, we're like, wait a second, it's going right to the part that's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It, like, we're like, you better hurry right up. There. Hurry up, hurry up. And then we start running on the rocks, <laughs> and, and it, by, by then it's already left the buoys and <laughs> got <laughs> into the open waters, and, and there then, was just no then, catching it. I was like, don't do it, Anton. It's not worth it. Don't yeah, and do I'm just it. on the edge, like, just sh- should, should I? I? Uh, should. <laughs> no, and Anton, no, he's no a strong it. swimmer, too, but. No. Not, yeah. I can't outswim a sprinkled donut. <laughs> There's no way. So every time we go to the water's edge, we're like, where's our donuts? <laughs> yeah, we're thinking there's probably some lucky kid praying for like inflatable toys or something. Yeah. <laughs> and just the wind it's like, just blows it's them. It's like Christmas, you yeah, know, Christmas. Santa Claus just deliver it right to their backyard. Yes. You want a donut? There it is. A pair of shoes? There it is. <laughs> yeah. What do I wish for today? I want a, a unicorn this time. Ooh, there you yeah. go. I'm get a floating unicorn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably yeah, like, have like a, a big net week. set up for like things that drift down the, the river. Mm-hmm. Well, no, we well, need to be, be smart cool. and like anchor them or tether them to us. Well, there was oh. that one. That's true. That kid did that. It, yeah, it, it that one kid. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Kid's leg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it wouldn't go far. Yeah. And Yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, we have uh, pretty awesome um, beaches here along the river where um, normally, where does the the Columbia River free, feed from? The Pacific Ocean? Yeah. Yes. So by the time, too, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's cold water normally. But by the time it gets here to the river, there's like little shallow areas that, that uh, are the great for swimming. The hot tub. <laughs> yeah, the hot tub. Yeah. <laughs> The hot tub is just like a, a <laughs> circle of rocks that people just built around it to keep it. Uh, and it's really shallow. So mm-hmm. the yeah. temperature is like 10 to 15 degrees warmer mm-hmm. than where the typical, the rest of the pool would be. Right. Yeah. I suspect there's a high concentration of child <laughs> urine in there. <laughs> exactly. Too. Yeah. It's <laughs> probably waiting there. <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> Yesterday when you yeah. guys were like, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to soak in it, not drink it. Come on. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> they fall back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're They're just like, splashing splash. like crazy. And then you can see all the gross stuff coming off. Yeah. Like, why is it slimy? In the <laughs> yeah. It was kind of gross. But it was worth it because we're all freezing. Warm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was one thing. It's When we first got here, that it was like 100 degrees. That we were um, painting out there, and so yeah, I tried not to uh, not to stray too far away from our campsite and the river access. So mm-hmm. uh, when it got hot enough, we could just hop in the river. That became a tradition that we found out here. And, yeah, uh, always first... wear oh. swim attire when you go <laughs> painting. Yeah, you, exactly, you have to yeah. be ready when you're painting to go right into the water and come back out and paint. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it, you just got to be ready. Don't don't even think about putting on your bikini or, or whatever the guys were in French. Speedos. <laughs> Speedos. Yeah. Don't even put your Speedos on. <laughs> Keep your painting clothes on from painting mm-hmm. to the ocean. Or in this case, the river. I just painted in swim trunks when I knew that I was going <laughs> to. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It was a little uh, cooler this this week, sure. though, than oh, for prior, sure. prior years. I feel like last year it was like 100 degrees the entire time we were here, right? Yeah, Did yeah. it ever cool down? I don't I, remember. No, remember. no. I remember in, in the um, 
during the reception, you go outside and it's just baking hot. Wow. And I remember just wearing, uh, I think, jeans for the uh, the, the opening night. <laughs> oh, did you? Like, oh, I should have just worn but, but I, but <laughs> I, wearing long pants. I don't remember yeah. getting cold, though, at any of the swim holes. Where this year, we actually got cold. Yeah, yeah. Well, last evening. night, yeah. It's yeah. Like, Last night? I wasn't cold. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> You're just saying that to me because I'll feel better. Well, they, it, it wasn't that cold because it wasn't as windy. Yeah, no, that's true. No, I mean, like yesterday, we uh, when we first, or not yesterday, the day before when we first got into the water, we thought it was going to be like, oh, this is going to suck. But as soon as we put our whole body in, then it was like kind of warmish. It just took our bodies that time to get acclimated to the water. And so, yeah, that was... It, it always, yeah, it's always the worst before you, right, um, before you put your body in all many, the way. Many, many curse words it, from many, many different artists. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what? Aside from swimming in the daytime, what I really have enjoyed, and Anton and I started this last year when we went and swim in the middle of the night. By the way, we broke some laws, supposedly, because we can't go into the swimming area last year after sunset. Oh, oh really? right. So, but we did it anyway. Quietly. Yeah. Well, we That's were right. close to sunrise. We could have oh, said that, like, that what it is? <laughs> well, we're waiting for sunrise. <laughs> so we, well we went sunset. and last year we went and we swam in the middle of the night, like midnight. Yeah. And my gosh, the Columbia River has never been calmer. It was like mm-hmm. glass, right? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. It was so still. And we stayed in there for like an hour and a half yeah, or something, yeah. a mm-hmm. long time. Yeah. Well, this year it wasn't like that. We went mm-hmm. and we swam at the river, but it was a lot of waves and it was... Mm-hmm. It was still yeah. nice, but yeah. It was wonderful, though. That would have been that amazing. That was in Viento, yeah. The swimming yeah. hole there was pretty cool. I like this one better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Th- well, one, if they had evenings like, like that like back that? there, oh, yeah, I so. I'd, I'd go back there. Yeah, I think yeah, it just that was wasn't really windy. cool. Just stargazing and, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, it was like this magical experience. I've <laughs> never seen the gorge like that. And Sergio, like, we asked you to come. Oh. And you're just too tired. <laughs> yeah. uh, swimming I at midnight. Out, yeah. it was Good magical. luck, guys. <laughs> yeah. We kept counting stars after yeah. stars. The shooting stars, stars. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, the shooting stars. That's been another thing that we've been able to see while we've been out here. Because, yeah, we're so far from any town besides uh, Big Vegas over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That's true. It's but, like a truck stop, right? That's yeah, yeah. It's oh. basically a truck stop, right? There's not much of a town there at all. Right? Uh-uh. But yeah, just from uh, from the distance, you see that's the only lights you see around here. So it mm-hmm. kind of looks like wow. there's something actually. And there's happening some neon going. and stuff. Yeah, yeah some, the diners like, yeah. advertising. It's they call it wow. Big's Vegas. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah, the, you just look up at the sky and just see all the stars up there. And, have you guys ever actually done a painting of like just a, a starry sky? Mm, I, I nope. imagined a lot of black paint with a few white <laughs> specks. <laughs> yeah. But I no, I've never done it. Uh, okay. I've only done like a handful of nocturnes, period. I just yeah, don't. Yeah, that's true. I don't know when I usually paint that. <laughs> and if it's like during an event, um, like I don't even paint the sunset because I just get so tired. I'll wake yeah. up, have breakfast, get out, maybe do some midday paintings. And mm-hmm. by the end of the day, I don't want to be on my feet anymore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Look, look this year, I haven't even painted anything probably after five o'clock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same here. All my all my uh, paintings are just super bright, <laughs> yeah. washed out, midday light. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> all you're getting, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I did. I didn't really wake up too early, except for that one day. And even then, I never did a sunrise. But no. somehow, we managed to paint four different times during the day. In that day, from midday afternoon evening to midnight and so i guess you could say i almost paint like what 12 hours straight but not really mm-hmm. with lots of swimming time in between <laughs> yeah of course a lot yeah. of cooking mm-hmm. time in between cooking, too yeah. <laughs> but yeah that used to be a thing when i first started doing this event everybody would go up and paint the sunrise uh and then everybody would get together and paint sunsets too or or nocturne sometimes as well but we just don't really we're I don't and know, I we just we got started lazy. corrupting everyone. We're like, <laughs> yeah. wait, we're like, but yeah. we're, why, why go paint when you can cook and cook swim? And yeah, exactly. And What's the and, point? And, and, oh, my God, and talk about the food. The eating is amazing. Yeah. Well, oh, thanks. my you gosh. Say, thanks, Anna. Whenever you Anna. camp with Za <laughs> and, and Anna exactly. and Anton. Yeah, and, and Anna's so, here yeah. for the weekend. Yeah, oh. we should let everybody know the menu. That we <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. Yeah, we, we off, should have like a little tasting menu talk here. So, well, for example, today we had crepes. And uh, <sighs> we had uh, bacon and eggs and a um, bunch of fruit 
And but I mean, do I did I even need to say anything else past crepes? Two types <laughs> oh, of crepes. Two types yeah, of crepes. One stuffed with Nutella and banana, uh-huh. yeah. fried on butter, and then rolled crepes with cottage cheese. Yeah. Yes, that could go savory. Yeah, or yeah, you can, you can swing it any, any way. <laughs> yeah. And then the bacon. The oh my gosh, yeah. Anton, the bacon was fantastic. We still have some left for lunch, by the way. <laughs> and then some eggs. eggs yeah. These poor so listeners. Got a new way bacon. of cooking scrambled eggs with no milk. And it, it's very soft. <laughs> it's it's convenient way. when we don't have yeah. milk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just whip it to hell. Just, yeah, just whip it like crazy, <laughs> yeah. and and uh, and and don't um, overcook it and cook it and not at such a high heat. That's all it is. If you expose the egg to too much temperature mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or too much heat, it they, will harden. Yeah, they turn into yeah. rubber. Yeah. Just a bit. Yeah. Unless that's what you like, then that's okay, too. We had one of those eater today, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, overall, though, like, that's just Like, that. our dinners are have kind of become oh, legendary. Our, apparently. Uh, <laughs> amongst the other... Uh, Campfires. Well, yeah, uh, yeah uh, amongst the other people who don't camp, they find out what we do out here at camp. They're like, oh, I want to come. Wait, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, talk about that. I our group is get getting larger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. true. Oh, last night we... Um, after uh, the day workshop, we had Randall and a couple of other Randy artists. Sexton, yeah. yeah. And we ended up having lob salads of all sorts. I mean, it was just amazing. And then you brought the... You should tell people what lob Krispies is Krispies. for oh, people who don't know. Krispy Kreme. <laughs> the, the lob. Lob is basically a Thai dish of... It can be pork. It can be chicken it could be beef but we did it with rotisserie chicken bought or yep. pre-cooked Buy, yes, and we, we did it the mong way which means a lot of herbs with mong spices and seasoning and uh, just a few things like for example chicken of course cilantro green onion fish sauce um, um salt basil. and pepper to taste basil mint. and mint especially if we oh, have we didn't we didn't have any mint last mint night this, but this i like time. mint mm-hmm. and then Lime, lime juice, just one lime. And if you happen to have the season, it should be really, really delicious. But if you don't, and if you happen to have the moan season, that's Mm -hmm. H-M-O-O-V. There's the Thai, there's the Lao, but I like the moan version because, Mm -hmm. hey, I'm moan. Hello, moan people. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, And that's what we had. And and I usually bring a couple of those packages. And whenever they have a craving for it, it takes me five minutes to whip it up. I know. It's so easy to make. And everybody loves it. It always gets rave reviews. (laughs) And everybody finishes it. Like, we've had two whole chicken. We have hamburgers. We have gazoon salads. And everybody always finished the lob. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think Anna and Sergio were making mong Loves uh, or no no, no uh, lava yeah, sandwiches, hamburgers, yeah. hamburger out of the hamburger bun, bun. <laughs> just, <laughs> and just packed it with with the lob and it actually tasted really good. Mm. The lettuce wraps is a new thing for me. Just, yeah. just stuffing the yeah. uh, lob and lettuce. It's wrap. nice that's and light. Yeah, yeah, that's it. how they yeah. usually yeah. eat it. Oh really? You, yeah, you can eat it with lettuce wrap, or you can actually eat it with at Thai restaurant. They serve it huh? with cabbage. Um, the oh really? Yeah, huh. it's, and it's a little bit more crunch to it, but it's yeah. Rice, I don't know yeah. if I've ever actually, um, what do you call it, ordered lob at a Thai restaurant. Oh, I don't know if you want to. Really? You might not like it because you know how to do it now. <laughs> yeah. You know the real lob. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> the, uh, restaurant I think at though. Thai restaurant, it's a different ink, um, recipe and oftentimes a little bit sweet. Oh, is that um, right? And sour. Yeah, it's mm. more where this is more of a savory. Yeah, dish. it's totally savory yeah. and, and sour. Yeah, yeah, I really yeah. like it. Mm-hmm. So, what yeah. else do we usually eat, Sergio? Uh, <laughs> yeah, what else? Uh, let's see. Za makes uh, what some ramen noodles as well. Sometimes, no, yeah. not just you ramen made the, the glass noodle. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Glass, glass noodle stir fry, stir fry. Yeah. with Chinese yeah. sausage yeah. and vegetable. We usually always bring salamis and and different cuts of meats and cheese mm-hmm. whenever we go. Swimming again, yeah. back to swimming. It's like yeah. food and play, food and exactly, play. You wonder yeah. how we get anything done. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I painted the least I've painted in a plein air event <laughs> since probably I started. <laughs> I only did five paintings for a, after four days, so I normally do. Yes, yeah, I'm usually like eight to ten paintings. I'm just like, no, I want to paint and swim. Yeah. And stuff. let's cut it in half. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. I think that's like quality. Plein air painting. Exactly. This is, this is, <laughs> you know. Yes, I think it's. Nobody needs to practice. Just to, no, no, no. We're <laughs> out here, and and I think, you know, at Zaw, the you end, should teach a workshop at the next plein air convention on how to have Zaw's fun. way of plein air painting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Like, and it, Play you'll have all a station day. where you teach recipes. This is you must Ooh. eat good. You in order for you to oh, swim good. Oh, not just good, but healthy. Good. Lots of vegetables. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, we try to encourage healthy eating at these planar events. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> healthy eating, but then we offset it with all the beer we drink. Oh, that's okay, yeah, exactly. too. <laughs> well, you got to stay hydrated. Oh, don't forget <laughs> the, the Italian night you guys had the other night. Oh, my God, oh, the yeah. pasta was so delicious. Yeah, oh, yeah. So this this year, um, yeah. we kind of, we have we usually have a big camp, and Zaz's idea was to break up and kind of cluster um, uh, all the campers into groups and mm -hmm. then each group would just host a dinner one night and so uh, Za, you were with Michael Lindstrom mm -hmm. you guys cooked together mm -hmm. and me and Sergio you guys did the um, what was it, the glass we did, noodles we did the Asian night you did the Italian yeah. night and then the third night I don't know what to call it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a mismatch it was the taste of the world <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> they made some like peanut sauce thing with some Indian mm -hmm. with what did Joanne make? Oh, it was so much uh, food. Oh, Joanne made some sausage, I think, right? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the 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 yeah the, the bread red sausage. sausage. Uh -huh. Yeah, with the yeah, pasta, with the red sauce. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. That was the taste of the world. You're absolutely <laughs> yeah. right. And it was so. <laughs> each of them cook enough to feed the entire group. So multiply by three, you can imagine how yeah. much food we have. I know, that was it's crazy. That was oh. that was and by the way, there's only seven or eight of us. So it's yeah. not like a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? Yeah. But we always have but guests, up, though. Yeah, we end up having a bunch mm -hmm. of people come over, and we just... yeah, we have guests. What we have, your friend from California. Uh, California. No, is it? Okay. Oh God. Oh Turner. Turner? Oh, you're talking Turner? about Turner? Turner? No. Yeah, Sergio yeah. knows him too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he's a. I guess he was living in Austin um, yeah. for a while. Now so, he's on the road. Um, yeah, Turner's got no home now. Well, his home is Mary Hill for this yeah. week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's the best Him and his family are traveling all yeah. over the country. Uh huh. Uh, it's two kids, wife, and their dog. Yeah, oh. it's wild. And he's just painting all over the place and visiting friends and family. Yeah, it's and pretty amazing. He's uh, doing the show. Mm hmm. This yeah. week. Oh, I got a great story though. Well, oh, yeah. it's not great for uh, Turner. <laughs> yeah. So, because I, you know, we've been painting here for a while, and uh, Turner had reached out right when he got into the show. He's like, yeah. "Oh, you know, I'll be in your neck of the woods. We should get together." So sweet, he uh, was camping here at Mary Hill. Yeah. And we finally set a date to uh, go out to. Uh, I was going to take him out to Cascade Locks to show him some some old painting sure, stomping sure. grounds. And um, you know, we're having a good time. We both finished these two sixteen by twenty paintings i think he, you know he really liked it It was the largest size both of us were painting it's on mm -hmm. stretched canvas and i and I, I put both of the paintings into a um uh, a, a carrier that kind of keeps uh, it's really like really simple but it keeps like the um, the canvas is exposed and so i set up for a new uh a new new spot turner was like down the trail from me and i put the paintings right behind me kind of at a safe distance and i flipped turner's painting up uh mine mine my side down so his is above the ground you know to protect like, it i gotta protect it yeah yeah and I'm going at this painting, and I'm painting on this 12 by 16 panel, so it's wood now. And um, I like I lay in too heavy with a stroke, and it pops off the the panel pops off my easel. Yeah. And my you know knee jerk reaction is to go grab it with my right hand, and instead of grabbing it, I like I like <laughs> flick the bottom it. of it, Spike I swatted it, it. yeah. <laughs> And I, 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 gave I it momentum. Gave it momentum, so it started spinning like a saw. <laughs> it just, it just kept, kept flying off the easel like that. And as I turned my head to see where it was flying to, the thing was like spinning, uh, spinning like a saw, and lands right on the back of Turner's painting oh. and cuts it. Yeah. <laughs> and then the thing tumbles forward and and uh, falls into the river because I was like right, <laughs> right by the Columbia there. <laughs> And I'm like standing there <laughs> with my, you know, this, <laughs> this looks like some movie scene or something. Like, did yeah. that just happen? Yeah. Like, no, I keep looking at it. It's like a two inch gash in his painting. Oh, <laughs> crap. But, but I did see that he turned that painting in because I he saw did. that he, he repaired it. Really well. yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I didn't it, even notice it. It didn't, yeah. It kind of hit at a, um, I, maybe not a really noticeable spot, like right on, right on a tree. And it was a pretty clean, like uh, kind of like a right angle cut, just uh, toward mm -hmm. the canvas. So wow. I think he, he patched it really well. <laughs> this is and, this is um, a good lesson to try to maybe paint on boards or paint on. Or I was about to say, yeah. Something. The lesson my takeaway is never paint on stretch canvas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, wow, that's, that's true. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, it was hilarious. We were talking about like the scenario of that. Like, what do you do in that situation? Like. Like as a as a person who did it, like, <laughs> how, how do you recompensate that? Like, yeah, 
Here's a here's a new pan. I'll go ahead and do that. Do your painting over. Yeah. Again. Do you do you do you just take your brush out and slightly fix it in their style? What do you do? I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, maybe I should have just left the panels. <laughs> in the like, water. No, no, by him. You know, and he didn't notice. And uh, I would say, oh, were you? You were the you one who that? carried them here. Oh, <laughs> what, what happened? <laughs> oh man, Turner, what a bummer! Yeah. I almost got my painting. I'm glad man. it's your painting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should be more careful. <laughs> it's like a car accident, you know. Somebody leave like paint chip or paint on the car, like with the accident. It'll oh, be sure, like sure. it'll be like you left some of your paint color on the back. <laughs> exactly. You yeah. just leave a note on his painting. Like, yeah. yeah. Sorry, don't leave it. Sorry, man. Yeah, call me. <laughs> call me. We'll exchange But then insurance. I won't give him my real number. <laughs> yeah. Give him Domino's or something. Yeah. <laughs> Bob. Back into your... I actually had a real experience like that uh, at another workshop. Uh, oh, yeah. You're one of yeah. Michael's students. Um, I... Th- I Michael Orwick is another uh, Oregon friend of ours. Mm-hmm. We had an event at the coast and I went there and I joined him in his last day of his workshop. And I think one of his students parks next to my car oh, and her no. doors are kind of high and she didn't put the e-brake on and her car started rolling back <gasps> as the door was open. And I was like getting stuff out of my trunk. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're, and she like, she hopped back into the car and like put the e-brake on. I'm like, wow, that was close. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh man, I'm glad everything's fine. Wow. And then she leaves or no, I, yeah, she leaves. We, we go paint together, and then I come back because I left early, and I look at my front fender, front right one, right by her car, and it has like this like twelve inch long like scratch <laughs> in my bu- in my fender. Yeah, I'm like well oh, that that wow. wasn't there before, and the <laughs> yeah. car's never moved. <laughs> and I'm like, did I not? What, did she do that and not say anything? <laughs> yeah. And like we, we she talked to me to my face right afterwards. <laughs> maybe she didn't know. I don't. She didn't know. I, maybe she probably you maybe know. yeah. Maybe, maybe she didn't know. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I can't really say that for sure. She did it then. Ah, man, it's so weird. <laughs> but um, I just yeah, whatever. You just like yeah. let it go. You just taped it and let yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I should have had Turner repair it. <laughs> <laughs> Help, man. <laughs> yeah. Get your buffer out. Hey, you're, you guys are going to have to uh, see if you can spot the painting that he repaired. Oh, all right. Okay, that's true. I didn't know which one. Yeah, you don't know I which one. I know back. which one it is. I only saw the back, so yep. I did not see the front. So we're mm-hmm. going to try to spot it. That try not like to do goal. it when Turner's around. Because yeah. he's going to look at it like, oh, you yeah. motherfucker. You know, so, <laughs> so they're trying to find the flaw. Oh, no, no, yeah. <laughs> no, I felt really bad. I, I, uh, I thinking of ways to make it up to him yeah believe me <laughs> yeah but it was funny that we can't like the scenario of like how how he would uh talk to his wife after <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah my imagination's like getting away thinking like he's gonna come back to, come back to the camper and just you know everybody's happy he did this great big painting that he's probably gonna sell yeah. and it's gonna you know keep prolonging his trip on the road and now anton ripped it. it yeah, yeah. And then Tasha's <laughs> wife's going to be furious at me. Yeah. Honey, that yeah. was our Why children's milk that? for the yeah. next two like, weeks. Food off our table. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't apologize to me, Anton. Apologize to, to her. Them, the yeah, kids. apologize to Bird. <laughs> yeah. Like her, his young, young daughter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You're going to have to tell her what this means to yeah. the family. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Tell her why she's hungry. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. The weight of the world. I know. That's it's, how bad I thought. Could just I'm be like, ruined oh when you just, with I think just, I just a little ruin his trip. That's spike. It. Yeah. What a oh. friend. Let's, yeah, let's just try and make Anton feel worse. Like it was a really, really good painting, right? Yeah, it was yeah like, I think a, it was his best. It was probably going to win a war, right? Yeah, not yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah. Randy's it's like I'm about to hang the blue ribbon. Like, wait, oh, what is what? that hole? What, what, what is that? that? That looks like a weird stroke. Oh my gosh, is that? That's a that's a gash in the canvas. Wow. What is he trying to pull here? No. No, no, he must have painted ribbon. this elsewhere. <laughs> no, yeah. no yeah. blue ribbon. <laughs> 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 this is what it's, it's like my, being with these yeah. two guys by the way they're just constantly like we would do the silliest thing we'll, we'll start with the subject we'll spin it off and the next thing you know we're on all fours our stomach we're laughing so hard <laughs> and they keep going and they can add and add anyway <laughs> yeah. that's what uh, this is this is what it's like for me it's like a week long comedy central <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, we should. Uh, when we were hanging out at the river the other day, that was funny. 
funny. <laughs> we were talking about, uh, so Zah brought up a thing. Uh, we were just, you know, staring up at the stars and you get all poetic when you look up at yeah. the stars. There. And uh, so you're like, uh, how did you? I, like I, the alien? I, 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 in Something. my mind's eye, I imagine like a cosmo where you can travel through a different to a different universe where the aliens would come down and invite you to go venture on these Grand Canyon, but like 20 times bigger than what we have on Earth and sure. whatever it is that, that's out there in the universe. And then I was like, how would you guys feel? Would would you let the alien? Would you go with the aliens? Yeah. And then so so then I was where like, where was I? I <laughs> no, you were right. actually you were there actually, but you were hanging out, Swimming. laying out on the oh, on the oh, rocks yeah. there. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you got, yeah, you guys were in the water. Yeah, we were, and I just us lay, three were in the water. Yeah. myself, Michael. Oh, and yeah, and yeah. so and so and when you said that I was like you gotta worry about the probing. Yeah. <laughs> they, they call, I call said I'll probing. go, and you said you gotta. So what about the probing? And then Michael goes, <laughs> so, I don't mind the probing. I, I, I'd Michael rather goes, be probed. I goes, I want the probing. Forget about the trip. Just yeah. give me the probing. Yeah. You can leave Get me here it over Earth. with already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he goes, I'll sign up just for the probing. Well, maybe that's that's the only way to befriend an alien. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like it's kind of like you never know. You know, it's like. You're in an alien relationship, and yeah. probing is going to happen sometimes. <laughs> oh, my hey, God. Do you think these aliens uh, paint? Do you think they have art? So, well, if I they invite you? I, they ask you, like, well, what do well, you do on Earth? And you're like, so strange. I do she art. must be an alien. Yeah. If they on. invite me, they will have art on their wall because I will make <laughs> yeah. art for them. But what if they don't get it? Like, they're asking you, like, well, what do you do on Earth? And, and you're they, like, you try to explain they, art. They don't get the concept. They, and then you're like, well, I have broken this one. fabric, like my shirt, <laughs> and I stretch it on wood sticks. Yeah. And then I get this crushed rock with oil. And I have this stick with animal hair attached to the tip. I'll and I know. Smear I'll, it. I know what to do. I'll do a very <laughs> make um, abstract version of a portrait of the alien for them. And they'll think that they picked the broken one. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, exactly. This one not so good. Yeah. <laughs> broken a don't, little. Don't probe her. Save, don't, save don't, the stay, devices. Stay. Yeah. We don't need her. Yeah. her uh, Get yeah. another one. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to examine her insides. They're broken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's how artists will be spared. <laughs> yeah. oh, They'll examine us. Oh, like life would be so bad. They're they're Earth. they're making. They're trying to make little images of what they see. Or uh, yeah, the they're like, like too much recording yeah. memory here. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> we left the one guy there because he was way too eager. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what his deal was. Yeah. <laughs> so. Cut him open. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god we were just laughing so hard and it was like i said it was like this it's endless every time i'm with these guys it, it it's just such a fun mm -hmm. relaxing memory making i don't know i yeah, don't know what to call it it's just it. become a thing where the um the actual event of painting and showing our work and everything has become secondary to yeah. actually just i think it's like we friends. get out here far enough just hanging out with close friends yeah. where we could just relax and f yeah. pretend we're not artists. <laughs> just like kind of, yeah. Normal what? people. Pretending? Like, I don't I even want to paint, man. <laughs> yeah. Some days are like that. Yeah. Isn't like, yeah. oh yeah, we still have to paint. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're like, you know, food and swimming and having fun just becomes more important oh, than, exactly, definitely. Yeah. than pretending that art is. Yeah. <laughs> pretending. <laughs> pretending. <Exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, we have a museum venue here. Yeah. Like, if they knew how little we cared. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. We care. We care. We care. We care. Yeah, exactly. So we should uh, yeah, have a, a backup plan for maybe an alternate camp out next year in oh. case uh, we don't get... Yeah, in case get the, uh, the podcast because, uh, gets listened to by the museum. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, we don't get invited back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're gonna we're, next year if that happens, we're gonna come paint it. anyway. We'll but crash we, the. We'll just crash it, and it'll be even better. We'll just come we as won't paid even have guests. To paint at all. Like, oh, I just walked into the museum. I paid admission. <laughs> yeah, I exactly. Just to the show. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, heard there's a show going on here. Then there's yeah. a picture with art. You know, yeah, each of our picture has a little X on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uninvited guests. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, speaking of the show. We're all looking forward to it. It's where we get to finally see what everybody else has done. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because it is an eighty-mile stretch of of um, subject matter to paint from. That we tend to kind of just kind of cluster together a little bit and figure out where we 
where we paint together. And so everybody else is doing their own thing. And some people are, are painting out in the, <laughs> there's a silent conversation <laughs> <happening next> to, <laughs> while I pontificate. So <laughs> what's Chewy? Come on, Chewy. Get Chewy in the on camping it, baby. cat. What is the Chewy? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if we got that on the mic. Hey man, yeah. this ain't a video podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Sergio, get it together. Yes. Where's the camera? Yeah, this exactly. Is good content here. <laughs> <laughs> Watch it. Yeah, if people. Yeah, people. Would, if there's a video podcast, we'd only be focusing on, on the, the cat. cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, yeah, you guys got him. Uh, you guys started when he was a kitten. You guys started bringing him out to uh, different places, right? Yeah, we let leash trained him. Um, how old was he? They. <laughs> four months maybe really I four months smaller yeah. when you started bringing him 18 20 <laughs> weeks maybe 18 weeks when did he get his first harness just when we got him we're interviewing uh anton's wife anna at the moment yeah <laughs> and, cat uh, mom's here cat her. mama <laughs> anyways oh, yeah, back I mean, on topic <laughs> sorry what were <laughs> yeah. a cat meow <laughs> just, like, oh, yeah. just like our paint we ignored this <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you talking about art? Yeah. There's a cat here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, yeah, we've been focusing as little on art as possible <laughs> this entire event. But uh, no, um, yeah, we're just about like uh, seeing the show because there's 40 artists total doing the event. So when we come in to turn in our our work at the end of of our painting session, we come to the museum and we see some of it we get to see most of it as a preview as we're um as we're turning in our things and dropping it off and everything but it, it is until tonight that we get to see it all hung and everything and see everything put together and get to see who who took an award <clears throat> amy <clears throat> uh, <Yeah>. but uh <laughs> <clears throat> yes uh you, pr- you can yep, pretty much fun. hand out the awards once you see the the list of names <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, okay that's first <laughs> second third all right i'm not gonna be a contender <laughs> More swimming. <laughs> you know, I swear, I think everybody will enjoy painting these events so much more if they... If they relax about yeah, it. Yeah, or if they, they work on just enjoying themselves rather than winning or, or, or creating amazing paintings, whatever that is. Zod, yeah. do you think people can truly swim without enjoying themselves? Yeah, if they're drowning, they will not enjoy themselves. That's, that's true. But that's not swimming if you're drowning. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of the whole, different. it's the opposite of swimming. Never know what's going to happen on Waiting to Dry podcast. Yeah. It's <laughs> exciting. Yeah, it's so exciting. <laughs> exactly. Random but, kids walking onto the set. Yeah. Cats. Cats we need an on-air light, a yeah. neon. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because sometimes we do, we do the podcast at Josh's house and... Uh, um, just yeah, um, like his wife's sister will just pop in, or somebody like somebody's friend will just pop in because it's pretty open door policy about his house in general. So we'll just be talking, and all of a sudden the door swings open. And it's you like, hear a hey, toilet God. flush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, what was I gonna say about plein air events? So um, yeah, like plein air events for me these days, I pretty much just do the ones that either I really want to. Um, paint at the location uh, which definitely there's a lot of that here like this is such a beautiful area so so much variety in the area so there's never you there's never time that you can't find something to paint and uh and then also the people who you do the event with who signed up and everything is important too so um so anton you used used to do a lot more plein air events and you just kind of stop doing them for the most part yeah i i feel like i've kind of taken on the same policy as well Mm -hmm. just if it's just convenient if it's the landscape's really good something i I like to paint and um that i'll keep or you know send to one of my galleries right and the people yeah so it's like if i leave for leave home for a week Mm -hmm. and i'm just going to be like hunkered down somewhere painting some strange landscape that i don't like uh i could do that at home (laughs) yeah (laughs) you know don't have to go it's to true. like North Dakota or whatever. <laughs> right. Those yeah, exactly. Don't got to go to Bakersfield again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's parts of Washington that look a lot like Bakersfield. Yeah, we drove through them. Yeah. yeah. But 
Yeah, it, these days you just there's no guarantee that you're gonna sell anything at a plein air event. Um, if you're lucky, you, you win. Technical difficulties, uh, as always. You just got back know. from a swim. <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> a two second dip. It got too hot. <laughs> Uh, God, what were we talking about? Uh, oh yeah, doing plein air events, like how we choose the events we go to these days. It's like, I mean, we pretty much at least tried every single one on the West Coast, I feel like. Um, uh, and Zah, you, you still, um, do a decent amount of plein air events. Maybe not as much as I do, but you still do I do a about few. two a year. <laughs> yeah. I, this one for sure. Just uh-huh. because I... I try to. Um, I used to work. Well, I still do uh-huh. for the Art Institute of Portland until they close uh, soon. But uh-huh. it's really difficult for me to leave for these weeks long or week or weeks long uh, trips. So mm-hmm. I would try to sneak in one to two a year if I can. And so this year it was just the Olmsted and this one. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing any other one. And, and oh, okay. I don't even. And I don't know. I just like you said, a lot of the 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 West Side or just keeping it really local. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I just do it because I enjoy it like this. You think you you might do more with like your new career change coming? No, I don't soon? see myself doing more. Oh really? Yeah, I don't. I, I I'm the way I paint, it's a little bit more I don't know. I don't know what it is. But it's just a little bit more non representational at times. Like mm-hmm. one time I took a painting in when I did the lighthouse, um uh, and, and she, she she said, What is it? <laughs> yeah. oh, no. and how does it hang because she, I hung it correctly yeah. and she's like how does it hang and I said um, I'm sorry uh, right side up yeah. Um, yeah. I said it's, it's, it's correct in the back yeah. you know and so anyway is my name signed upside down <laughs> yeah. So, yeah exactly so I mean I, I don't think the plein air yeah. thing is for me um, right. I, I enjoy camaraderie and I do it for, yeah. for that part of it but to, mm-hmm. to make a living at it um, I, for me, it, it, mm-hmm. it's not for me, but I really do enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I should talk a little bit about like if people, I'll, I'll put up a, when I put up the episode examples of your guys' work, but both of your works are very unique in the plein air world. I think <laughs> like nobody else paints like either of you guys. So, uh, like Zah, your work is very, um, there's a lot of really soft edges, but it's very like, um, um, how would you describe your work in words? Like a man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's really bold, but uh-huh. tonal. Right. It's, yeah. You know, um, stuff is, is very, uh, suggested in the, mm-hmm. in the paintings suggestive. as well. Suggestive. I love that word. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. It's very provocative. I was going to say. Sensual. Yeah. It's everywhere in the painting. <laughs> Yeah. That's why it's a man's painting. Uh, hey. No. <laughs> Yours is. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Um, but I, I would say, yeah. Some people, I guess it kind of veers more toward abstract as uh, as compared to some other uh, artist's work. And uh, you guys both use a lot of paint. And um, it's you have a good sense of color in a lot of your work, even though you do have a lot of these uh, muted colors and tones and stuff in your painting, there's still so much variety within that color. And, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, (laughs) sure. Uh, We pay him to say that, by the way. (laughs) Yeah. Exactly. No, you're you're definitely Saying all that doesn't mean I really like the painting. (laughs) I'm just just describing it. (laughs) And then Anton, I'm gonna rip yours now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. Tear a hole in it. <laughs> yeah, but your work has uh, become very bold and direct, but also very abstract. You've gone, and sometimes you've gotten to a point where it's like really hard to even see that it's a landscape. Like it's, it's it is a landscape, especially when you know where it's painted. But um, your work is, your when you first started, at least when I first started seeing your work, it it was a lot more representational. I mean, you'd you'd always painted. Uh, pretty chunky and um and pretty bold as far as like contrast goes and all that but um you definitely had more of a um what do you call it i guess you could just more representational look to to your work like uh, when we would do the los gatos event you would do like a street scene and it was totally different than the type of thing you paint now and um 
yeah, these days your your work has gotten way th- like your paint that you put on is super thick and um like there's that one painting you did of the barn uh where we both painted uh or was it even a barn or yeah, just like I a shed like some, barn. some yeah. Looks some, like some barn. Bar- yeah small barn or shed or some yeah of- and so you there's this big thick ass stroke like it uh, a big stroke of white with some color streaked into it as well and the the um the amount that it sticks out from the painting is probably what, like close to an inch or so, maybe, maybe even more. I think the thickest part is probably like three quarters of an inch yeah. coming out. It's pretty. Basically, you would take like a small tube of white paint that you get at the store, you squeeze it on there, and then you have to add maybe another tube of of, of that equal amount to get that stroke in there. It's a lot of paint. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. So, what made you decide to start like painting so? thickly and less representational yeah um man i feel like my my whole method is kind of changing and, mm-hmm. and uh, evolving it was interesting so what we were talking about on the drive to seattle yeah 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 we, we had a long drive to <laughs> go see the seattle art fair yesterday yeah. where we did talk about some, something about this yeah um yeah i don't know i think it's like uh, kind of what i mentioned to you earlier i i think my whole I've just been seeing seeing myself more in my work mm-hmm. and just realizing that the things that I was kind of trying to get after as an mm-hmm. artist, both aesthetically and just even artistic lifestyle, yeah. kind of had really little to do with art. And mm. uh, it was just kind of like this tool or like this placeholder. Mm-hmm. And I was always really, as cliche as it sounds, kind of like really trying to find my own identity, my own self right. in it. And so like when I kind of realized that, I kind of let go, started to let go of like a lot of the... Um, the, the the you know like framework and structures of what a certain type of art and what kind of kind of category it belongs to aesthetically mm-hmm. and just trying to really go after the things that um appeal to me in painting and a lot of it had to do with with just the uh the the, the, the textural quality of paint i really really kind of like that and just to, to use and explore that and in, in trying to rep- represent something mm-hmm. and sometimes that you know maybe more about the uh um uh, the textural quality than than anything else, mm. self color and and value and things like that. Right. Um, y- yeah, I don't know. I, I, to be quite honest, I still don't know like what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. I, it's it seems like it's like the most more more the most liberated I felt to paint. Yeah. And the more like floating in some the in outer space <laughs> as well. Like I have no idea where what side is up or down. <laughs> How I describe your painting is if somebody takes a, a regular painting, zooms in really closely, <laughs> and that's what your painting feels like to mm. me. That's interesting. I never thought of it that way, but but if, yeah. if you, but if you take that same painting that Anton did and you you go way back, isn't that what it looks like anyway? It looks like a painting that yeah, very like limited when, uh, strokes. When people post like details of a, a super chunky painting. oh yeah. yeah and i was like wow that looks like a cool painting too bad it's only one square inch <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so i was like haha i got 16 by 20 <laughs> yeah you're like well let me make that inch into 16 by 20 inches and yeah yeah i, I still kind of try to get after some kind of representation and sure it's, yeah it's, it's something uh, that we were talking about also on the way there because uh me and you we've been talking about that series it's come up on the podcast before mm. the series i've been yeah, working on i showed it, you yeah. some of those paintings before yeah, yeah as well. i love them um the ones that, uh, i showed za i think in um i think i may have shown you in olmstead these uh those new like semi abstract figure paintings I that i've been it. doing and um uh, and yeah um part of what i've been trying to explore in that series for myself is like why i choose the subjects i paint and uh what what about those subjects do i really actually enjoy painting and, and what would that say about me like through the paint um the choice of subject matter if i strip away as much as i can about what i like about painting and strip or and just make it the focus much more about the paint than what i'm actually painting what happens to the to my subject matter or how I want to approach my subject matter. And, um, it, it, for me, what I, um, learned through doing that was, um, I can't go completely abstract 
with my work. There needs to be some anchor to reality for, for my work, for me to be not only interested in it, but also um, it's almost like a kind of a safety net. Like It's like what you're saying, like floating around in space, uh, like not ready to p- cut the cord and float away yet. <laughs> so I need that little bit of of uh realism just just some uh, just a tiny bit um like even if it's just like a part of a hand or something that i kind of tucked away in into the painting or or like um and just enough that suggests that there that this is a human that i'm depicting while the rest of it can be whatever the heck i want it to be and they become studies of form and color and and Maybe not even color yet. I'll get into color probably eventually in that series. But right now it's just forming and design. And um, yeah, you were saying that for your work, Anton, you you want to have some bit of representation in, in your work as well. That's why you keep going out to do the figure. Yeah, uh, the even though you do do some, like you've been doing recently in your sketchbook, these like purely abstract Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, actually, when you explain your process uh, uh, yesterday when we were driving, that's mm-hmm. I think I remember saying I that's exactly seems like the same approach I was taking, except just pu- purely with the landscape and not, yeah, not the exactly. figure. It was um, kind of like yeah, this realization like what you know what does draw me, what does excite me about landscape painting, and can I distill and strip away you know, everything that um, I'm used to kind of painting and identifying as a landscape and, mm-hmm. and, try, and trying to take it take it as far as you can. But mm-hmm. yeah, I think I find also that I need that ground. Even though sometimes to many people it doesn't look like a landscape, it looks purely abstract. Yeah. I'll usually say, like, well, it's a landscape. <laughs> yeah. But, sometimes uh, you go way further. I feel like last year and maybe the year before even, you really pushed like the abstraction of it. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, there was a one that you did. I think it was a. Uh, it was was it here? At Man- yeah, here? it was. Kind of, there was a yeah, bunch years of, ago. Uh-huh. Uh, well, there was one that you did. I think it was a uh, some flowers that uh-huh, you painted. Uh-huh, Do you remember that? Uh-huh. Was that? Yeah, it was a, I think it was like some fruits. Oh, a bunch fl- of leaves, fruits! Leaves yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah. That was here at Mary Hill, right? Yeah, I'm trying yeah, to remember yeah, if it was yeah. here or Sonoma, but um, yeah, like people, so many people come out. You're like, what is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, you know, that's how, the how is it hang? Exactly. Yeah, you probably exactly. could have hung it several different ways. I didn't exactly, really care. Yeah. And I do definitely do a lot more of that in the studio back at home. And mm-hmm. that's kind of the difficulty of doing plein air shows is because, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know. It's There's obviously this perception. It's it's an aesthetic one that plein air painting has to kind of look a certain way. Well, if you're out going out to the landscape to paint, it should probably look something <laughs> like what you're painting. Right. And so I'll tend to paint a little bit more representationally mm-hmm. here and maybe one or two paintings I'll kind of really, really push. Right. Yeah. They usually don't like stipulate in the rules that it's has to be representational, but it's kind of the implied thing that yeah. it should probably look like. Yeah. Like yeah. And I'm going to get to a point where if I keep painting like that, um, it's going to, you know, my, my delivered results are yeah. like a lot different than they what I, the images the, I used yeah. to, to get juried in. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, <yeah>. well, <laughs> we kind of went I off. I told you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to invent the pavlenko rule <laughs> yeah exactly like we have to enforce the pavlenko rule like you have to paint how you yeah submit it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sorry and I, I, I definitely feel like i've been doing a lot of that because i know that during the submission process they probably how old are I the paintings get... that you <laughs> you know well <laughs> yeah 2010 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. before even you were plein air with like, <laughs> yeah no they're not that old i yeah you know, I, I do I have a few fresh ones. Mm-hmm. I think I maybe I, I have to paint a few realistic ones just in case I want to enter just into some shows. Yeah, that's so interesting. Like say, that hey, they're, even they're have to new. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the the public reception to your are it feels like uh, you're definitely like the artist artist when it comes to this kind yes, of thing. Yes, he is. Yeah, because people. Inspiring. Yeah, especially our friend Carol Gray Wyman, who's also doing the the event. Um, she paints very thick as well, but also pretty representational her work is very color filled she's actually been on the podcast before yeah her work's great yeah and so yeah she's always talking about like i want to see what anton does this year (laughs) because she's really into like seeing like how you're pushing it and um uh pushing your your landscapes in a new different direction i think it's um 
especially it's inspiring to her because I think she's kind of in the same boat. I actually wish she was here to, to talk about it with us, but I think she's kind of in the same boat as well of like trying to figure out like what it is about paint that really um, in, drives her to paint the way she does. So I think I guess we're all somewhat in that same boat, even if it's not like the main focus of our of our work at any given time it's always in the back of our our brains yeah yeah i think we see that in other people's work like my my change to do this as like i credit it to za because she's around and i see her work Mm -hmm. all the time and her Mm -hmm. technique and like guys like eric jacobson who kind of like they don't you know veer away from the strict representational Mm -hmm. line and uh yeah you kind of pick that stuff up and it it gives you courage for sure yeah wow that's 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 really cool that's also another thing I like about coming up to this event that um, there's a certain aesthetic that I think um, the artists here in Portland tend to gravitate a little bit more towards. And it is this sort of like thicker brushwork, broken color, huh. um, uh, edge, like different ways that edges are manipulated. I don't see that as much in um, like, I feel like every pocket of like plein air of, uh, events that like the groups happen um there's a different somewhat overall look to it Mm -hmm. like i feel like in colorado there's more like uh they don't yeah they don't paint the same way (laughs) that they do in colorado it's a lot more like i don't know how how to describe what they do there but it's a bit more it's real it's probably more trying to be realistic but also a lot of uh painterly realistic yeah yeah there's like a painterly realism to to a lot of the work there and then california it's a lot more influenced by people like uh edgar Payne mm-hmm. or, or um all the other early california I, artists i would have, say the northwest is influenced by like monet and all those old guys if you look something at something like that yeah, yeah. like Cezanne, it's very brushworky very mm-hmm pushed and raw yeah <laughs> do you know what i mean sure. i could see that in, in a lot of people's work around here and i just noticed that uh, because yeah when i see the the highest or you know the higher level that uh the plein air painters in this in this part of the the area of the country here um uh, like you and like Zah, you you influenced me actually when oh, after doing these events and, you, you and also Anton up. and and, uh, oh. and uh, Eric Jacobson, of course, um, they've influenced me to to try and put more put thicker paint on, use a bit more broken color, manipulate edges more. So that's what my takeaway from hanging out with you guys, like how it's rubbed off on on my art. And style, I thought it was just the food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, use a uh, lob medium yeah. for my brushwork. Lob, lob, follow the lob. <laughs> follow the lob. Yeah, exactly. Great art. But yeah. oh, well, it's wonderful to see that, Serge. You've you've always been such a phenomenal painter. From the first time I saw it, I was just like, Thanks. wow. I remember you guys were like two years old when I saw yeah. it. Yeah, two years old. We were just. It feels yeah. like it. Infants. Brushes yeah. in our diapers. Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. you're rolling around in your. Yeah. Your own, <laughs> yeah. But I've always thought, wow, look at this great sense of atmospheric perce- and this handling execution of edges and color, and I just thought it was just phenomenal. You both, and then to watch you guys explore, become more painterly, I guess is right. a word yeah. to describe it, and less illustrative or uh-huh. less of the norm. Less matter of fact. Uh, yeah, I. Um, not too long ago, I found a, a few of the paintings from the first year that I came up to Pacific Northwest. Uh, the paint was a lot more thin. Uh, the shadows were a lot darker. Um, <laughs> even the lights were were darker. Like they just kind of look. If you if I were to compare the two, if you saw like a painting that I did 2018 to one I did in 2010 side by side. It almost looked like dingy next to the newest one. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that exciting? It is. It definitely means I've grown as a plein air painter, for sure. <laughs> yeah, you should probably stop if you compare 2018 <laughs> to 2010 painting. It's the same. <laughs> Just advice for artists. Yeah, Take exactly. your brushes and donate it to uh, yeah. Goodwill. Somebody probably could use it. <laughs> Time for the yards. Studio sale. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Getting rid of all my supplies. <laughs> 
I know we, we've all changed. I know just, just for myself, I mean, I went through a period where I was really trying to explore with brushes and then I was really exploring with shapes mm -hmm. and then now I'm exploring something else and it's just as exciting. And, and mm -hmm, even mm -hmm. from two years ago, three years ago, for me, I look at my work and I can see a change in it and, and, and mm -hmm. that, that's okay. I, uh -huh. I don't want to be known as, oh, this is, you can still see my, my my rhythm in there, but if you actually slow down and just watch mm -hmm, the mark making, mm -hmm. and I think that's exciting. I think that oh, yeah. I don't know what, like you were saying, I don't know what um, what ultimately will be, but right now I like the the idea of yeah, yeah. I think there's like this. Um, I used to get like really intimidated by other artists who had this really strong sense of direction mm -hmm. and like a, just a clear lineal kind of progression of of, of you know their clarity or, or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I kind of accept, had to accept to myself that like, I'm probably not going to be one of those artists. Like maybe, yeah. I don't know. I don't know where, where I'm going to land. Kind of like what mm -hmm. you're saying. I'm, I'm pretty cool exploring. Yeah. Either brushwork or whatever. I, right. When you were saying that, I remember a couple, several years ago, maybe even longer, you're really excited about like temperature shifts and like, you're like, there's yeah. a temperature shift in every major shape. Yeah. Just look at it. Like you're right, like, and it's so interesting to when you accent and just build the whole painting around that. Mm. Like it just it makes a make, makes a really powerful thing, and I still see that in your work. Like you're you know you, next year you're onto something else, and I've very much been been like that as well. Yeah. And uh, it, you know it was I think it was like a big sense of insecurity for me for a long time, just because it's mm. like oh geez, it just keeps changing and changing. Like, what am I going <laughs> to calm down and just? Be okay with something. Yeah. Like, what am I going to start sculpting in plein air? Actually, uh, <laughs> yeah, yes. Naked. Why not? <laughs> You're almost there with the amount of paint. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just going to start like putting. I need to get a watercolor easel where I just put the canvas flat. <laughs> yeah. And just start building. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Build a tree. With yeah. Me. yeah. I'm going to make a topographical representation <laughs> yeah. of the landscape. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> With You're gonna have to build armature. Uh, yeah. You have to build armature into your canvas. Oh, totally. So yeah. that to get, like, wire. hold the paint. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to invent a special kiln to fire it. Yeah, well. yeah and bake them. Plain air kiln. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just so interesting. The idea of, I guess, in some ways, I think knowing that you're not satisfied with your work mm -hmm. i think it's the first step in giving you clues as to the idea that you need to explore more i think mm. when you become really content or you came up with a system that maybe wins you some awards i think yeah. you are content and you stop trying or you think that's the only way in your mm -hmm. head i think also the other thing that i i, I can't stand is sometimes when, when people get yeah, talk People, yeah. people win too many awards or something like that. It gets to their head, and they mm -hmm. they're just not nice anymore. You know, and some of the, the mm. best planner people out there who's really really secure in what they do, they're so nice. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. And and I, it, I guess you know, I guess that's something to to say about. Being yeah, nice. I mean, the people that we end up becoming friends with, we become friends with them for a reason. Like at least our group does. Yeah. We don't They're win actually... awards and we're still nice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Woo! <laughs> don't win any awards. I want you to stay nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. If you win Blue Ribbon tomorrow or tonight, you have to just, you know, politely but formally reject the award. Yeah, exactly. and, and, and the same thing goes for you too. Yeah. You have to instantly reject me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you accept it. Well, that was a good. Uh, that was a good time knowing you. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> camping won't be the same. Yeah, camping will not be the same. Back to burgers and dogs. <laughs> Hope you remember that law of rescue. Yeah, uh, I'm need already it. forgetting it, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna need it. You have to invent your own Russian law. <laughs> yeah, that does not sound good. <laughs> it's, um, your you Russian lob is just pretty much like leftovers. <laughs> like just, uh, some meat, oh, mashed potatoes. Oh my God, some right. I'm having so much. Onions and just Babs cold all like mixed me. up. <laughs> you see? Oh. Sad cold leftovers. This, this is what it's like hanging out with this too. It's just one night stop comedy after another. Oh man, only if you guys would be so lucky and find whatever your little find group your and group. Yeah, yeah, find your tribe and. <laughs> Get out there. Don't do these things in a way where it becomes about the competition. I think that's the mm -hmm. the big thing to remember if you are going to start in yeah, this. That's the worst thing you can do because you're just going to set yourself up for disappointment when it comes to 
trying to chase awards and stuff. Like, not that I haven't had that attitude before, but I think it's been beaten out of me by too many <laughs> rejections and losses. Yeah, but, uh, for sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but it does seem like uh, the less you stress yourself out about it, and I don't want to say less you care because you still want to make a good painting. Yes. But mm-hmm. The less you put all the extra stuff aside, the more you end up like actually like people actually like your paintings more. You end up actually getting awards mm-hmm. uh, more often. Isn't you, that funny how that works? Yeah. Uh, I think but we're still waiting for that, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, excuse me. You're yeah, speaking to the Carmel Art that's Festival. Oh yeah! Oh my gosh! Oh my god! Instantly lost a good one right yeah, there. Yeah. Wait a minute. Why are we on this podcast? Why, why are we on this stinky podcast? Yeah. Saw so he's using he's us. He's totally <laughs> using us. Oh my god! I'm not gonna feed him love tonight. <laughs> Is that your blue ribbon hanging on your car <laughs> window? Yeah, <laughs> in the rear mirror. Actually, with me everywhere. Yeah. Actually, yeah, it's exactly. hanging you, on his shirt right now. Yeah. He wears his necklace. Neck, oh, the necktie. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like a it's like a pendant, a permanent yeah, yeah. pendant. <laughs> you can't even handle all the discounts I get. Mm. Like, oh it's no, better than AAA. <laughs> you just go to my hotel. Yeah. Wait, blue? Yeah, Where's, first place Carmel. Yeah, yeah, yeah we got a room for you. Way, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> at the uh, Motel Six. <laughs> yeah, they were all the red carpet out yeah. at the Motel Six. <laughs> We got pillows. a room in the back. Got it, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Did you get a uh, blue ribbon tattoo yet? <laughs> <laughs> That's what all the Carmel Says winners do. Carmel exactly, 2018. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, it's kind of a thing. That's too awesome. <laughs> oh, I guess sometimes people can stay kind of nice. Uh, you are the exception to the rule. We'll forgive yeah. you. Yeah. If the yeah, um, every um, every award I get. It's going to be a test of my uh, <laughs> yeah. kindness. Yeah, <laughs> stay humble. Stay yeah. humble. I'm a jerk. I'm a jerk. I'm humble. <laughs> I'm a jerk. I'm humble. Yeah. <laughs> Who is going to win out? <laughs> Pretty soon, I'm just going to hire you to to feed me lobster <laughs> like a, like grapes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here comes one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, just imagine like Cleopatra, except with Sergio. Exactly. <laughs> Fan, Fanning, hire yeah. Anton to fan you with the <laughs> like shirtless, standing like, all oiled up, <laughs> fanning you. I'm like, Bob, would you like? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> You're like, on a spoon, woman, on a spoon. Snuck <laughs> 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 the bowl out of your hands. Make me a fresh batch. <laughs> Yeah, gee, Sergio, uh, you sure thought about that a lot. Yeah, after so, winning that blue so ribbon. Visual. Right? <laughs> when you guys stare up at the stars and think of yeah. aliens, I think of. Lab. Be, <laughs> no, Sir, Sergio's going next? like it's, he's connecting the stars, and it's going S E R G. I just start naming yeah. constellations after myself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I plan your painter. Uh, <laughs> best. I trace a ribbon in the sky. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> blue ribbon. That's just a ribbon, a giant blue ribbon. Yeah. <laughs> or number one. I like how the sky is dark blue, like my ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> That's during the day, too. <laughs> the sun is really round, like the top of my ribbon button. That's a good yellow ribbon now. To get. Yeah. <laughs> Sergio's probably going to be like opening like beer bottles with his ribbon at parties. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's that? Oh, it's it's a ribbon. It's it's just oh, my this whole thing. Yeah, this Academy whole thing. Award I just use it as a open. What this whole thing? 2018 Carmen mm-hmm. winner. Yeah, <laughs> it's got so many. You know, I could just stare. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> I have last year's uh, prop up my table, like get it level. Mm-hmm. Oh, you shim it with ribbons? Yeah. Oh, man, that, nice. that, that table is getting pretty high now. Yeah. <laughs> I usually just, I heat my house with ribbons. It's, it's like, instead <laughs> yeah. of firewood, well, you have, have so have many a of lot. them. Just, yeah. <laughs> burn pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta make room, too, you know. It burns so good, you have to uh, let it go and get a tiny home. I you know, the blue it. ribbons burn the cleanest. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you want right. to win more of the That's blue the ones. Reason, blue yeah. flame, you know. <laughs> <The> blue flame. <laughs> <laughs> really after that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh how can anybody not enjoy this 
<laughs> what makes it funny about this too, guys, yeah, is like smoking it. Yeah. yeah, we're not. <laughs> we're high on life. You have to see their expression and their body language when they're going off on these tangents. <laughs> uh, we're going to have to video video uh, this somehow because somehow. They, they've got to see this. This is you hilarious. You could go Instagram live on your phone. Oh, I, my, mine, mine is like what? Uh, series four or whatever. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're still running Instagram one on it. I don't. I don't have Instagram. That's how I. I think I have that. Can that, you get it? Well, you have it on account. a phone, phone. Oh, I do. Yeah, you don't oh. even know you have an account. I, I, Somebody I is. <laughs> Somebody's yeah. using me. No, you, you only uh, posted two pictures. One is you, and I think your niece like. Oh, I think funny she face. created it and oh. posted it. <laughs> All right. I don't even know how to access it. See really? How, oh yeah. My God. You oh, you have a password. social media manager. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's pretty... called my my. I, I I need to get one. Hmm. You have so many. Uh, <sighs> Your, you have your quote unquote daughter do it for you. Oh, that's yeah. true. I do have a lot of daughters. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. it's funny. Yeah, Zah, you have a oh. quite the the group, the following here. I mean, for good reason. I mean, oh. you feed us all. <laughs> <laughs> we're like we're like uh, cats. We just follow. Yeah, them. exactly. Like, oh my god! Show up and purr. It was so funny the other night. I did, I didn't even pay attention, so I was sitting. Not on the main table, but to the side, just you know, and we're just talking. The next, you know, Elo is like on the other side table, going, Zah, we're eating. You should be at the main table. So everybody comes over because everybody's around you. I didn't even <laughs> oh, realize that. Right. And People then as soon, I go, okay, you. sorry. And then I moved to the table. And then everybody came over. You know, yeah. was like, see, see what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah, I'm like realize. standing there like, I'm hungry and there's food on the table, but Zaz <laughs> here. Where's the food? <laughs> yeah. well, are we not allowed to eat? Oh, no. No, but, but I it's love it. It's all peanut butter sandwiches That's when all you're not around. <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. Really? No, I don't believe you. <laughs> oh, it, I, I ate the pasta. Believe it, yeah. Could, Loaf it of bread, yummy. jar of peanut butter. <laughs> jar, that's like my one week lunch. <laughs> yeah. That's oh pretty much God. how you ate for lunch, right? Yeah. <laughs> I eat your leftovers because Yay. you just pawned them off on me. I'm yeah. like, I'm like, pack it. If, if you don't eat it, when are we going to eat it? So yeah. I was like, take, I don't know what kind of food you're going to cook. Exactly. Yeah. Cook. <laughs> <laughs> take with you. Yeah. yeah. What well, we're going to eat out of a jar. Yeah. That's another amazing thing about having a, a group of painters together, just getting a, or, you know, doing a camping thing like this, just make enough food and make it a big potluck, and then mm-hmm. you have leftovers for the next few days or so. Yep. So that yep. reminds me, Zot and I were thinking, and some other artists are talking about this too, but, like, wouldn't it be cool to just have paint outs like mm. this with camping when this mm-hmm. whole thing started, but no competition. Just yes. do invite a group of artists, mm-hmm. some friends, and we go pick a beautiful state place. park somewhere, some beautiful mm-hmm. place, cool time of the year, mm-hmm. and go camp. Kind of like what we did for... Jacobson's workshop once yeah. felt like oh that. My God, that. And it was, was like amazing. the time of the year was later where like yeah. the fall colors are out there in Washington. I want to oh, do really? that again. I think it's yeah, October. It was, yeah. Like that. It was a little bit cold, but like mm-hmm. you could, you know, fire band's gone. You could sit and oh, okay. burn a campfire. Yeah, and like awesome. that area was so pretty. And oh, we just need to gosh. do that and just get a, Let's just do it. a few camp, yeah. uh, campgrounds. Or and campsites. there's so many campsites around that time of the year mm-hmm. that's available because, right, you know. Yeah. 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 Peak yeah. season's over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and basically you wake up and you paint from when you roll out of bed to when you go to sleep. And mm-hmm. it's not even like this where you have to drive necessarily to mm-hmm. go paint. Mm-hmm. You're there. The idea is you just paint with each other and you learn from each other. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's kind of what we do here. <laughs> like That's basically what we're doing. It's just strip away the part that we're not as interested in anymore. Yeah, other yeah. Than, uh, yeah. Other than my, I mean, I still need a ribbon, so you guys got to bring a, okay. just a ribbon with yeah. you for well, me. Apparently, yeah. we're not going to be in the circle. <laughs> Unless we, we get, get ribbons. Anything, which, yeah. which, I, I don't know. I'll have to go buy you a ribbon. Yeah. I'll go make you Anna's one. Anna's making me one right now. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> she brought her little, Joey, brought her can little we soap borrow kit. you a blue <laughs> ribbon, <laughs> and we'll tie it around your daddy's neck. That, that's a blue ribbon. Yeah. There you go. Make a blue See, ribbon. See, right there. Oh, that's why Chewie's got a blue ribbon. Well, yeah, he is a first... First rate cat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Aren't you choo choo? He's like ignoring us. <laughs> yeah. He's like, what are they doing? But man. <laughs> yeah, so I really want to do that. There's some yeah, artists that we that. want to invite. Sergio, like, you definitely have to come up for that. For sure, that. yeah. Anytime. Yeah, maybe anytime. we could drive down a little bit south, but not too far. <laughs> I was thinking yeah, like exactly. south a little bit. Can't make it too easy on me. <laughs> Especially if we go but, uh, later in the season, we can even do it more deserty. We don't yeah. because we paint so much trees around where we live. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm all, maybe it's just me, but I'm always craving more desert. 
You see, I'm talking, laughing so much. I'm <laughs> foaming at the <laughs> mouth. So attractive. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, no, it's all the lab talking. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. So that's what we're going we're gonna to try to set up. And that's when awesome, we do, yeah. we'll send a, a shout out. And, mm-hmm. uh, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll invite like, I don't know, 10, 12. And then anybody that they want to drag along, I don't really care. You know, it is what it is. How much do you think we should charge for a convention-like event like this? <laughs> oh. <clears throat> food. That's food, it. Food, yeah. 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 Just make sure everybody brings enough food for us to cook with and potluck. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And eat. That's it. You know. Yeah, I think yeah, that'd be really perfect. fun. It'd be like yeah. kind of replicate this type of uh, yeah. uh, environment. Yeah. And it'd give everybody mm-hmm. a chance to experience it. So that they realize that this is, for me, in any, any way, this is what it's about. Mm-hmm. Right here, right now, you know, just getting to know somebody on that level. So if you talk into the top of it, it's... It, on that it, level. Yeah, that's way better. <laughs> I wanted to make myself <clears throat> serious. Yeah, because if you talk like this, it doesn't catch on the mic really. It's okay, really low, I'll so try. Yeah, yeah just keep it. Yeah. Much better? Much, much Man, better. Man, Anson, this is hard work. I can't <laughs> keep the mic close enough. Wrist, so. I usually, yeah. That's why we got mic stands, so we don't have to do that. These but. aren't carbon fiber microphones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, no, let's do that. I'm so let's looking forward. Awesome. We've talked about it for like two years mm-hmm. now. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Two years. Yeah, that'd be cool to like, and get out and do some experimental stuff. Like, I want to like haul like a yeah. big, like, like a sailboat sail and paint it. Yeah. Big canvas. Big sailboat sail. You know, <laughs> just something large. set up on the water and just paint. Yeah. <laughs> wow, and I, yeah. I want to experiment with cold wax. I want to. Mm. Oh, yeah. do, oh, I want to do different that, things. Yeah. In, on location. That, we'll that see book what that, that looks you have like. on the on cold wax medium is really cool. Uh-huh. Yeah. Did you ever it. pick it up? Or no, no, no. I forgot the name. I was going to oh, text. Okay. You, you should, you should uh, text me that. Yeah. If they, if people want to look at this book, I'll maybe I'll put a link up on our website. But um, um, it's uh the artist is Rebecca. Uh, either Crowell or Crowell and uh, it, her book is called like Cold Wax Medium Techniques and Principles or something like that and uh, yeah if you look her up like B- Rebecca Crowell um, Cold Wax um, it will show up her website and everything and her work is awesome it's actually one of the big uh, a pretty big influence on on the direction that I wanted to go with the with that abstract mm-hmm. figure. Nice. Um, I love the textures that she builds up, and the thing that I like also about her work there's a there's a depth that's built that can only be achieved by spending time on it, like building up the layers with with wax and and oil mm-hmm. mixed into mm-hmm. it. Um, mm. There's like if you mess with the ratio between the oil and the wax, it, it becomes a, a different surface. And so um, because it's wax, it's also soft. So you can go in and scrape off yeah. areas and, and redo it. Or you can like almost use the wax as a mask. So like it, say you paint a big old um, field of color underneath the wax, but you throw um, some texture over it. If you mix enough wax, you can scrape off a lot of that wax and nice. leave that, that mm. color underneath. Wow. And it makes an, a new sort sort of texture to yeah, your yeah, work. Yeah, that kind of stuff's been really interesting me so much the more I paint. Yeah, like, same I'm here. just not at all interested in a la prima. Like, I, I can't finish a painting in one, one go even if I sit there for like eight hours. Right, yeah. Like, I have to have these laser, layers that dry and mm-hmm. kind of come come back and come into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, I'll, I'll, I'll drag paintings in from the field now that when I paint outdoors and I know that they're like, you know, 60% finished. Like, mm-hmm. I have enough information but I know what I want, what I want to do with them or or experiment with them. Mm-hmm. I think maybe like mixing up the some some medium like cold wax for sure. Uh, yeah, there's another kind of one um, called Velasquez Medium that um, I think Rublev makes or one of those um, companies, and uh, it's not wax, but it's a uh, I think it's an oil. Maybe it has some wax in it, but it's an oil mixed with uh, I want to say calcium or barium or some some um, some other like compound like that mm-hmm. and uh you mix it with it and it, it it comes out of the tube looking gray but once you mix with it um it becomes colorless like, it doesn't um change mm. the color of your paint it just uh, mm. it makes your work more textured like it's just like almost like a filler to your work but it builds up texture and, and it dries fairly quickly too so 
Uh, yeah, I'd be interested to see what happens when you use cold wax with the amount of oil that you use. Mm. Um, also, uh, you got to be careful with with wax if you use too much of it on, especially on stretch canvas. It becomes more brittle. Mm. So, so it, like a rigid supports would be better. Yeah, for rigid supports are a lot better for it. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, totally see that. Um, yeah, that. Uh, I've been messing around with cold wax here and there. I've even taken it out in the field before with plein air painting. And what's interesting about it is that it does settle up so quickly, especially out here. If you were to paint in the sun with with um, some cold wax mixed into it, it would dry. It would be touch dry within um, minutes, especially if you, Ooh, it's on the sun. I want that. Yeah. So uh, it wouldn't. It's still manipulatable because, like, you have to wait for the oil to dry for it to be actually, like, touch dry. Do you use Gamblin's uh, cold uh-huh. wax? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I see that one around yeah. a lot. And she actually talks about in her book the difference. Like, there's one called um, Dorland's Wax Medium. Have you seen that one before? It has, like, a black. It, it um, comes Maybe in I'd a recognize the table label. with a black uh, or a tin with a black label around mm. it. And uh, apparently there's a few different ways to make cold wax like if you you can actually make it yourself too uh, but mm. there's different waxes that they'll make it with and so the Dorland's medium has a different um texture or not texture different composition than the the gambling stuff and i haven't really messed with the the Dorland's one since i switched to gambling mm-hmm. so i don't know there might be a difference in the handling of it but um yeah, uh, people, even, uh, so uh, MJ, Josh's wife, um, we do the podcast with, the, um, she started messing around with cold wax as well for um, texture in, in her backgrounds, and uh, I think she she's enjoying it as well. So nice. There's a lot you can do That'd with it. That'd be cool to do, um, maybe get a couple buckets of that at, for the uh, uh, paint out, paint and oh, have yeah. all of us just experiment with it, because totally. most of us oh. don't know anything to do with That's it. Like, let's just, let's just mess around yeah, with yeah. that. I, I want to go thicker, but exactly. I want to do like a and, layer yeah. of thicker. I don't want it thick mm-hmm. necessarily just one time. That's one of yeah, the things yeah. that I learned from when I was doing the water mixable, because I was going mm-hmm. thicker and thicker, and I find that I didn't like the look of just going thick for the sake of thick all at once. Mm-hmm. I like the buildup. Yeah, right. right. So yeah, for sure. It was just, yeah, so interesting. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, cold wax um, does give you a chance in plein air to layer a bit more. So you you, um, you kind of get to speed up that process of working over time, um, like in mul- on multiple sessions, waiting for it to dry. Waiting to dry people. <laughs> Dot com. Uh, <laughs> waiting to dry. Dot com. fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, uh, instead of waiting days and days to dry, you can sort of make a, a reasonable, um, um, what do you call it? Just like a kind of fake it a bit, <laughs> like the uh, waiting a couple of, of days of time to over time to let it dry between layers. If you're painting and it's hot enough, it'll just dry really quickly. Um, the wax it kind of melt though. Like, I it does a little like bit. Yeah. Um, it's sometimes. Yeah. If if you're working in the sun and you have it on your palette, it'll start to actually melt. Really? I imagine. Does it have like a? Like a is it like a? Like a melted uh, beeswax. Is there like some solvent or some kind of vehicle in it that probably flashes off in the heat? Mm-hmm. And so it sets, yeah. Sets it I think they make. I think they make the Gamblin stuff with Gamsol. Oh, okay. In, in it, yeah. So how do you keep it? Do you have to put it like on ice? To no, work in the sun. no. I mean, I mean, you liquid if you nitrogen. if it's so dark, uh, if it's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what did you say? Liquid nitrogen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so Carry convenient when you go. Me. Yeah, or dry Please. ice can can work too. Solvent is too much work. It really depends on um, where you're using it. For the most part, if you're working in it, it's a stable like uh, room temperature environment. You just oh. put it down on your palate, and it's like paste. But if it gets too hot outside, then yeah, it'll start to melt, and then you maybe want to put it keep in like a pallet cup or something like that. So, so I just remembered where we, could, I remembered somebody that might be able to score us some gambling cold wax medium oh. An artist that we might know, possibly oh. invite to the camp out. <laughs> oh, good idea. Okay, mm-hmm. they're on the list. Yep, <laughs> list is filling up, folks. 
Send in your resume. Yeah. Send in your open call season. There is a, uh, a vetting a process. Uh, yeah. 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 Sure. yeah, exactly. If you're an artist that works for a paint company, give us a call. Give us a call. <laughs> and bring the stuff. <laughs> yeah, bring the stuff, man. Uh, That's awesome. Oh, say um, oh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about um, the trip that we did up to Seattle because we went there for a reason. <laughs> yeah. Went so the, the uh, yeah. Seattle Art Fair um, was in town, or, or I don't travel, but mm-hmm. uh, it's this this uh, it was this weekend. And I've been to that um, fair a few times since they started several years ago. It was, mm-hmm. it was pretty interesting. I'm just not not used to that type of like the environment. The environment. Yeah, 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 exactly. That that type of art world. Mm-hmm. Um, it's mostly contemporary art galleries, kind of right. all over the world. And um, so I've just been vi- visiting, you know, checking it out and uh, seeing yeah. seeing what's what. And so yesterday, they, they've been doing it over uh, over the same weekend as the show, so uh, mm-hmm. it's been difficult to get to. But right. yesterday we had kind of a free day after we turned in our paintings. Mm-hmm. Just kind of hit me in the head, like, well, we're in Washington, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Let's drive to Seattle, <laughs> yeah. not realizing it was going to be like a four-hour drive or something. Exactly. One yeah. way. But um, yeah, but, but by that time I realized it was too late. It was like, we're like an hour away from Seattle. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, I'm not going to turn around now. Exactly, like, yeah. Man, we might have some traffic. <laughs> yeah. But... Um, but yeah, I thought um, I thought previous years the work was a little better. Mm. And Why do you suppose that is? I don't know. Maybe I think. Um, well, Pacific Northwest never really had kind of like an, you know, an international art fair, right? Yeah. That like the, on this caliber that like maybe L.A. or Miami or your yeah, European it did remind. Have. It had a feeling of like a art fair that you see in in San Francisco. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like it, I think that was definitely what they were they were after. This wasn't yeah. like some kind of artist vendor booth or something. These right, are like right. white wall galleries, kind of showing <laughs> their stuff. Um, and oh, dude, I don't even know enough to like say. That the you know I'm not no critic and I can't say <laughs> or I'm no one to judge what, what, what the no caliber <laughs> yeah of work is this uh-huh. year. Maybe I think it was just that there were two sarcastic artists uh, at the at the show <laughs> yeah. this year. You out and of me, place. and so both of yeah. us were just kind of like place, the only yeah. people wearing shorts. Yeah, we showed up in like our painting gear, and everybody <laughs> yeah. has like Gucci eyewear yeah. and like ironic pink socks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, like oh you're an artist pretentious like, sometimes though like that's exactly that. what Sergio and I were saying like yeah. you don't roll out of bed like this like man you <laughs> yeah. took you like two hours to get ready and you just happened to pop yeah. into this art fair oh, no, I was yeah. telling Anton on the drive back that the the people the funniest people to me that are the people there um, the young men who are probably like under the age of like 40 yeah. um, and they show up to uh, alone but they show up dressed to the nines they have a suit on and mm-hmm. everything and they mm-hmm. have like a smart little kerchief like very artsy colored yeah, yeah. kerchief wow. with the matching like polka dot socks or whatever right <laughs> and uh and it's like even they look at a place in a venue like that even though everybody's kind of dressed up all artsy and stuff you look like you're there. You have an ulterior motive when you're there. Like sure. you're either there to, you know, I don't know, try to try to impress people by just like how you look, or uh, I don't know, maybe they're there to hit on artsy girls. That's also <laughs> a, a, an idea. They're probably hitting on yeah, artsy girls and mm-hmm. art dealers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, they're trying. But what we're saying, what, at least what I've noticed in the art world, the people who actually have money in the art world, at least in this part of, of the country, they don't dress like they have money. Yeah. Like they just, they're very unassuming. Yeah, actually, way. I forgot to mention on the drive back when we were talking about that, I, I, we were walking around and I overheard like uh, one of the dealers, this, this lady was talking to this gentleman, they were good, negotiating some like $25,000 painting. Uh-huh. I'm like, whoa, is sale happening? <laughs> and the guy looks like, one of my uncles. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, <laughs> just some normal dude, some like, you some, should like, look closer, maybe it is your uncle. <laughs> no, no, none of my uncles can afford oh. that. Well, maybe some of them. Um, <laughs> but maybe they wouldn't buy $25,000 paintings. Right, right. But yeah, yeah, that's a, that's totally true. And um, I don't think a lot of those 35 year old hipster um, bohemian types are purchasing $25,000 paintings. Right, so, right. So yeah, t- the, yeah, typical people with money, I feel like, uh, don't need to dress up like that. I don't know. That's what I assume. I would think Not having so, money. Yeah. 
but uh, there. I mean, it sounds like we're kind of like bagging on the the thing a little bit, but there actually was some good things there. Um, I don't oh, know yeah, if you totally. remember the, the some of them. There was that one guy that we both really liked, that Pastelist. Um, mm -hmm. um, just sort of like semi abstracted a little bit of his work. Um, he had really nice frames too. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I could pull up his name, Ray Rusikas. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yeah, he had really cool stuff. Here's on <laughs> next to the unfortunately <gasps> named Doug wow. Trump. Yeah. Oh, Doug. Doug? Yeah. Oh man, this is. Beautiful. Which actually, I I remember kind of liking Doug Trump's work a little bit, but it was that it was a uh, yeah. Stop saying it, D Trump. <laughs> yeah. Like, exactly. No, it's Doug. <laughs> yeah. Doug T. He should probably just go by Doug T. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Reverse that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, there were some other guys I liked. It was cool to see. Um, uh, so yeah, those Ryan, Brut Ru uh, Ryan, Ryan Rutenberg, Rutenberg uh, yeah. uh, paintings. I've been kind of yeah. following that guy for a little while. Scott Forum Gallant, Gallery is a pretty well-known gallery in uh, New York, so they had a booth there. Yeah. Um, it was interesting to run into um, Ken from Hashimoto Contemporary out there. <laughs> He's probably like, what the hell is this guy doing? <laughs> yeah. How do they let you in in those <laughs> shorts? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, they must have money. Yeah. They had, uh, <laughs> yeah. They had some uh, Andrew Wyeth originals. That was really cool to yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, that was see really neat. A few water colors of his. Yeah. Um, a there lot was a of booth that had like last year. Um, there was a booth that had like uh, old artists. Like uh, there was a Monet in there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, what was that? Um, and then there was the fake Monet, the Moray. Moray, yeah, we thought it was a typo because it looked like a Monet painting. <laughs> yeah. And there's like this But they black... sign it as a Moray? No, that's an artist. the guy's yeah. name is like Henry Moray or something like that. Yeah. But it's spelled like M-O-R-E-T. It's, so it's probably we like just Claude that... Moray. Yeah. Like Claude Monet. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> um, Unfortunately named Impressionist. Yeah. Uh, that Alyssa Monk's painting I liked too. That was mm -hmm. cool to see. Yeah, yeah, I remember her work it's previous a giant years too. Piece, yeah, really big. Mm -hmm. It's kind of neat to see some of the stuff that I've seen online. Some mm -hmm. of these artists, whether I've either followed or just kind of seen in galleries, and then seeing it up close, it almost like like you were talking about some of the drawings. It kind of demystifies it. Like you see, like they're just they're cross hatching technique, and mm -hmm. oh, in a thumbnail, it looks super realistic. Right? Or, yeah, uh, on Instagram. On Instagram, yeah, on your phone, but uh, in real life, um. So, yeah, it looks like just tons of hours of work. But <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, can see how they did it. Yeah, her work is pretty amazing because of how textured and stuff it is when you look at it up close. Like, that's a lot of stepping back and squinting <laughs> to get that mm -hmm. point. Um, but, yeah, there were some other things. You know, it was funny, though. Uh, remember how uh, we were looking at the paintings that, uh, like, the big, thick paintings and we're and we look at what they were <laughs> oh yeah yeah so there's like this booth that like we just saw from the hall and there's these large paintings with tons of paint just like slathered on and we were both like whoa we walk up to it and we like you know we look at the little tag see who painted it the medium and then we both go like oh acrylic oh man <laughs> like, never mind <laughs> So you judge me? Yeah. No, wow. actually, well, here's the reason that we feel that way. Like acrylic just seems like such a more like I don't know disposable medium to us. Like uh, also that uh, oh also the main thing actually not even the medium but just the way that the mediums handle. If you paint an acrylic, you know it's gonna dry pretty quickly. Even if you lay it on thickly, like yeah. even the most thick acrylic paint, if you put it on the canvas, it's gonna dry. It, within two days or whatever um and so um knowing that a painting is super thick like that but it's acrylic you're like okay it didn't take you as long as you, if you did it with oil the superior medium yeah <laughs> like you compare it to that those rutenberg paintings like yeah. that guy had a store like 50 pounds of paint on a canvas <laughs> exactly. without touching it for like three months before he could ship yeah. it to one of his dealers so That's yeah, crazy. there was the one. Yeah, then later on, uh, we we came across another painting that was somewhat similar, um, but we looked at the 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 label and it said it was done in oil. We we're like, yes, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so snobs. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's that. There's this Japanese gal. A lot of Tokyo galleries for some reason there this was, year. Yeah, it was more than previous Tokyo, years. Yeah, there's a Korean gallery as well. Yeah, and there was like this. Uh, there was this guy who was painting really large format, but. He was painting like in these like oil washes. I wow. think there was probably oil. Mm -hmm. And that looked like it just took him like 
I don't know, four minutes to paint. Oh, yeah, like, He just right. gets like this like 16 inch we, brush. We came up with that <laughs> scenario. <We're> like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got a solo <laughs> show this weekend. <laughs> Dude, give me like 40 minutes. I'll be done. <laughs> I will get, I will get 10 paintings yeah. done in 40 minutes. I think it just takes him to, it takes him more time to wire <laughs> his canvases yeah, exactly. up, ready to hang. It's a log to mix the paint. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and even that, he's still, it's like almost no mixing in the paint. Yeah. Anyway. It's just like two, like two different brushes and different colors and just yeah. some of it bleeds together I'm like wow you know, <laughs> we're like totally we're in the wrong hard. technique like, yeah. Yeah. like exactly. selling for like we 50 grand to... a painting or whatever <laughs> that, that was one thing that we we kind of commented to each other probably loud enough for a gallerist to hear <laughs> yeah there <laughs> were a few times yeah i don't mind doing that the like, <laughs> office is walking around, like wow that looks like total garbage i think that's the worst painting in this show <laughs> yeah. and then two guys the two guys in the shorts just walk off <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's, that's awful true. Yeah, the, the idea that we had that uh we didn't get to execute was uh he, <laughs> it, it, it all dared me to just go up to just a random uh gallery booth owner and just be like like my name's sergio lopez like don't even have a business card in <laughs> just show up like how and i am uh, dressed right now i'm basically dressed the same way and just go up to him like i'm looking for representation uh what can you do for me yeah <laughs> like <laughs> What do you think? You guys, you guys have an opening in your roster. <laughs> yeah. I really like what's going on here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, they have a few exceptions, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, you can make room for me. Just yeah. move him aside. Yeah. And just take like his journal or ledger and start writing down your email. <laughs> yeah. I'll have my people get in touch with your people. Yeah. And, uh, check out my website. Yeah. Check out my. <laughs> just uh, have, have a coat with all my blue ribbons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Blow your nose. <laughs> <in> your blue <laughs> ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, this, yeah. yeah. Carmel, first place. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. My nose my blue yeah, room. exactly. <laughs> that would have been pretty funny, though. Not changing like, people at I'm all. I'm an artist. It's you're here at an, We're here at an art fair. <laughs> it's only, you know, logical that... I mean, what are we all about? doing here, yeah, people? exactly. <laughs> Sales, representation. <laughs> no, we should have uh, picked each other's... Guys. Maybe if we weren't in such a rush, I would have liked to do that. Like, you, oh, you pick, pick yeah, other, yeah, to pick you the most pretentious, <laughs> you know, like, Gucci eyewear and pink socks. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Get that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe go up to the one... The guy that was uh, the gallery um, that was showing Wayne White. Oh, it, yeah, yeah. The lady, like, wouldn't even stand up to talk to us. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, that's the one. Yeah, because we were, like, yeah, because we were asking, like, oh, was, uh, uh, I think you were saying, like, you were asking them a question. I, I, think, I swear I saw his work in Denver. That's what it was. Right, yeah. right, And I'm right, like, right. oh, is he represented in Denver? She's like, I don't know. We represent him in New York. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was kind of, like, a really abrupt, um, like totally just blowing us off. So yeah. Like, yeah. And so I was like, okay, time. so there must be some other guy ripping him off in Denver. Mm-hmm. All right. I think he said that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she didn't think that was funny. Yeah. Hey, my name is Anton Blavenko. I'm looking for a gallery in New York. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> right. After. Seems like Sean's got a lot of real estate. You here go around the corner, and put on a jacket, and come back. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You're a different person. Yeah, no, we switch shirts. <laughs> <laughs> no, that wasn't me. <laughs> Which of the guys that was just asking about representation yeah. in Denver two hey. seconds ago? No, yeah. no, no. I, I, I've been told there's a lot of people that look like me. Yeah. <laughs> what are you racist? I'm. <laughs> <laughs> you just are you racist you against off? Russians? Yeah. yeah, exactly. This is an outrage. We all look alike. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny. She's like, I'm the Russian three of us too. should come. Like they won't know. Like which. Like Russian, <laughs> Hispanic, Hmong. Asian, Hmong. Yeah. yeah, forget about it. So confusing. <laughs> well, it sounds like it was an awesome trip. And, uh, it was fun. Yeah. You, know, you went on a mail fun. date. It was <laughs> fun uh, talking about. The, yeah. Well, yeah, well, we had a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> We shared We're, one hot dog like Lady in the Tramp. Because <laughs> 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 he wanted onions on his hot dog. Yeah, yeah, I have yeah. none of it. <laughs> <laughs> and now um, the the drive there was fun because uh, it was a great conversation that should never be recorded. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, like, like many great conversations which should never be recorded. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
to name uh shall shall be uh unrecorded to protect the innocent yeah exactly yes. <laughs> there were some there were some serious artist discussion you know? that was harm in the making of that conversation <laughs> well we have to vent you know we just open the windows <laughs> get it out <laughs> yeah off the record. I guess so. I I had that moment too with Michael. I told him I'm going to be a girl and then he's going to we're going to have a girl talk. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Michael had to be your Michael's your, like uh, I'm Michael. only halfway into this painting. Oh, my, Michael uh, Michael's like okay, I guess we can have your girl talk and so after that I'm like you're my sister. <laughs> Forget about being my brother. I you've crossed the line into the sisterhood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now like Mike, you, you and Michael have a talk, and he comes back with like cornrows we'll braided. Like, hey, Mike, how are you? <laughs> Braiding each other's hair. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I told him. Or I his said, beard. Braid his beard. Yeah. <laughs> cornrows. I said, I'm so sorry. I said, I feel like I'm demasc- demasculated. Yeah, emasculated. Uh, yeah. You and and I didn't mean to, but you're just so easy to talk to, like a like a girl. <laughs> After that Michael, probing talk, he emasculated himself. Yeah. <laughs> I don't got to worry a thing about walked, that. Walked into that one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and there was that tree painting last year. Mm-hmm. That, was, that was more like a Oh, he was talk. mortified from that, yeah. so. <laughs> well, we're getting close to being done. I mean, we almost went two hours already. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so one of the segments that we started doing recently was a... Uh, 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 artists, it's kind of a fun question to ask people like their uh, their top five artists, dead or alive. And uh, I know I didn't give you much prep for that, but uh, just uh, uh, off the top of your head, if you guys have a list that um, you can just scramble up, that'd be I'm fun. Googling to hear. like <laughs> really venerable <laughs> artists <laughs> and dead or alive. That's uh. Uh well like for a al- alive for example Brian Rutenberg is a favorite of yours right now yeah yeah right? I really like that guy that uh huh he'd, he'd be a cool guy to hang out with or uh-huh. share a studio with yeah hi Brian sure. <laughs> 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 I, I like your work cut in top page link two 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 yeah. two <laughs> call two after nine <laughs> um yeah that uh. Any uh, Russian artists that yeah, you might Yeah, I mean, into? I don't know. Leviton, obviously. Leviton, I, I feel like yeah. I'm always finding Leviton, like new paintings of Leviton that I've never seen before. Or either like some guy's yeah. really good and he's painting like Leviton. Mm-hmm. Or like, geez, are they just like digging these out of like some old ladies' wow. attics or yeah, something no kidding. that he like left in the villages? Yeah, I'm but, sure. And in it Russia impresses me. Like, oh, f- man, it like blows me away. Like, mm. I think he was, uh, he was really good. Um, and then like, I don't know. They, uh, I feel like... I'd love to have hung out in the mid, like the mid-century abstract mm-hmm. expressionist. Oh yeah, days, yeah, like in New me York, too. Like. Do you have a, a standout? I read that? a lot, like on de Kooning. Okay, I like, I like his work. Cool. And he was kind of like he still had this almost like a, this representational, like you know, yeah. whole like his figures and some of his landscapes, though really abstract, still feel like landscapes to me. Right, right. Yeah, as well as like a lot of the other guys are. I mean, yeah, it's great, but just uh-huh. not as 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 interesting to me. Yeah, De Kooning is somebody I've grown to appreciate more, especially seeing the influence that he's had on, on artists I like, like um, Cecily Brown, for example. Uh-huh. She's she definitely looks like she's taken after De Kooning a bit. I read yeah. in one of his bios he used to like um, watch TV and would draw like just kind of mindlessly sketch with charcoal and pencil oh, and yeah. i thought like dude that's so great like sometimes Anne and i just sit there and watch tv you can uh-huh. still watch hang out but i'll get my sketchbook and just some pencils i'll get a ske- yeah, a ske- sketchbook and pencils and just just quickly start drawing like uh-huh. little figures and stuff and you don't know, just try idea. to get like yeah. scribble it down their essence and uh-huh yeah so i've been filling up a lot of sketchbooks at home doing that yeah that's awesome yeah, I knew people that would like sketch from the TV just to like do really quick like, uh-huh, uh-huh. gesture of the fun. person's face or whatever. Yeah. You do faces? <laughs> yeah. I let the pencil run. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Yeah, I don't know who else. Uh... Let's see. Um, any any early California artists that do it for you? Oh, uh, early California. I mean, Edgar Payne, but I'm pretty sure so many people already. <laughs> but his schedule as a dead guy to be to be visited to be uh, interviewed. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm exactly. talking more of the dead guys. It said it was dead or alive. So. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. But uh, 
Um, he only likes them if they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> no competition. <laughs> he killed like, them. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, I'd go visit this guy's studio if I, if I killed him. <laughs> uh, let's see. You know, one more a wild card for you that somebody that maybe people wouldn't expect that you would like. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm trying to think. Hmm. Hope you're getting your list ready, Zah. Yeah, Zah. Like Some of those are on team. my list. So. I don't know why I'm looking at my yeah. Instagram Pop feed. No, no, no. I <laughs> had them Just here already. He, what else, who he else has Zah talked about? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to remember. She can steal I know she bones. has, like, yeah, just cool artists. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll throw one in after Zah goes. Mm. All right. I'll well, my wild card. I definitely like Dakuni. That he's awesome. one of Copycat. mine, um, babe, <laughs> in terms of just being so bold. And I love, sure, sure. and again, yeah, I, I've grown to like believe. his work over time. I don't mm-hmm. think I got him when I was in college. It I makes for sure no did. sense. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. I hit it all. all yeah. That it was, work I just didn't get it. And um, I like, uh, I like, of course, Nikolai Fetch. And I have to give him oh, a two sure. cents because oh, yeah. he changed. He's way up there. He changed my life in mm-hmm. terms of when I saw that show. I finally in person. In the in person. In yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, I yeah. felt yeah. like I, really I felt regretted. like yeah. It, after anything. that show, I, I I had an inkling as far as like, wow, that's what an artist mm. is about. Because it's 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 massive the amount of work that was there and it's every every single piece even the little sketch was so profound to me mm-hmm. and so yeah so those two and of course I I, I like Edgar Payne although I I'm not as I've learned to like other California impressionists around that more. time perhaps a bit more than mm-hmm. him just because they're a little bit more expressive in the their work he's mm-hmm. he's very colored or design oriented right. but the brushwork is not really his thing right it's um, very matter of fact yeah. yeah and of course you know um I think the modern um master that represents sergeant maybe a little that that really does experiment push the boundaries for me is uh, definitely Quan Ho. Yeah, he, yeah. He is. It, He's definitely a top five alive for yeah, me. Yeah, he you don't you don't even have to like him, or or and he does such an eclectic <laughs> work. Yeah. I know, but you don't even have to like him. But his work is amazing. But he seems like a really nice guy. But I don't yeah, know he him. Is. He's gonna go on Facebook friend me right after this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Please, I, I I like you very much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, it, yeah, so how many do I have already? Four, right? I think you got oh, four. Yeah. Sergei. Sergei. Sergei is another uh, one that, I, Sergei Bongart. Bongart yeah. I love his art before I knew what it was, well, oh, really? who he is. Yeah, I, yes. I remember it hanging at Disney when I used to work in Florida. And by then, I think he may have 92, no, no. Yeah, 95. When did Sergei die? Like in the 80s, right? Late 80s or something like that? Mm-hmm. So he yeah, must have so. just passed away. But I felt like I was cheated. Yeah, I think he passed away like in the 90s. 90? I yeah. I felt like I, I got cheated because I didn't get to study <laughs> with him. He would have been oh, somebody really? that I would have really... Born too late, Zah. Uh, just, mm. just a little too late. And so that, that I, was, I was very sad. Did you study with any colorists? Oh, okay. I was curious if you like went out to... To uh, the East Coast and study with like Henchy no. uh, students at all? No, or? I. Oh. Uh, the my philosophy and my my approach has all came out of a just experimenting and just trying to be efficient, mm-hmm. just like everything I do. I like to. I don't believe in working hard. I believe in working uh, Amen to that. efficiently. Yeah. Why we're here? And <laughs> so, and so the way I paint, the way I live, whatever it is, I just you know, and so I. It's just a necessity. I. I create the kind of work I do because it's appealing to me and two it's fast and and, and I want to get from A to Z I don't want to go through B C D E F G <laughs> yeah so yeah, for sure so yeah so color theories uh you know all of that stuff it's just through observation and experimentation mm-hmm. awesome I, um, all right so yeah to wrap it up uh, I have one last question it's something that Brand new segment to the podcast <laughs> that, uh, that I'm calling, uh, I'm going to call it for now, David Cho Money. <laughs> and the reason I call it that because he's a rich artist and gets to do whatever the heck he wants. And so uh, I want to know what you would do with uh, David Cho Money. <laughs> Basically, ooh. artistically. How much money does David Cho have? What are we talking about here? Hundreds of millions. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But like, uh, not like steadily making three thousand dollars a month. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, okay, but uh, a lot more than that. No, I mean, like, yeah. You, you say, uh, f- 
uh, the next Facebook came by and you got stock in it and yeah. they, it paid out like, and you're like, Oh, now I get to do what I want as an artist, uh, what I want to do with, with, with money artistically that I don't have the opportunity to do yet, but it's like yeah. a dream of wow. yours. That's a I, we kind of talked about it a little bit. Yeah. On and, and I've actually asked that question myself before. <laughs> it's kind of a scary question to ask. Cause I think yeah. like, Am I just like painting because I'm poor? Like this yeah. is like really a- easy to access paints and <laughs> yeah, canvas. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, what if I had tons of money? Maybe I'd still be an artistic Sculpture. person. Right. But like, yeah, I wouldn't need this. Yeah, maybe I would just like rent like cranes or something and have like a dip, <laughs> dip it into a brush. <laughs> yeah, and just like yeah. swing it around on like a, you know, so you'd be like Jim Carrey, 10, to like <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's yeah. fascinating, yeah. Anton. That's hilarious. But I think like my my dream. You'd use all the paint. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to buy all the paint in Portland. <laughs> yeah. Deliver it to Robert just... Ramblin, I'm buying you out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shut down production. <laughs> yeah. And then reopen. To create again. one painting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm commissioning one painting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'd probably talking... do something like that, like mm-hmm. realistically, but I think... <laughs> Not realistically, maybe that's <laughs> right. wildly. That's so that's, yeah, but maybe realistically, <laughs> uh, my my like I think my dream like not retirement but work till I die type of thing would be to have working studios across the world, mm-hmm. like one here oh, in man, like Portland, like close to family. Because it'll have to be back here, like one somewhere in Europe, maybe like French countryside or something. Anna and I really like visiting there, mm-hmm. and then maybe one like in I don't know like. Argentina or Chile or something somewhere it's close to like some rugged and some some wow. uh, 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 you know more affordable uh, country yeah, yeah. and then just like travel like and just have like set little work schedule based around my tr- my time traveling in these places and yeah, maybe have play yeah. have have room Four to invite other uh, yeah yeah different seasons different landscapes and invite friends to come and stay there whether they're friends or uh, other artists have like little guests rooms or lodges yeah almost like these little like several month residency type of things i'd love Mm -hmm. to i'd love to do that for sure yeah that's a lot of what i would do as well but also i think um i would try to push my subject matter to be a bit more ambitious like Mm. um try and do like more like you know crazy multiple figure compositions with like all this Mm -hmm. all this set almost like become a set designer and like make all these crazy things to set Mm -hmm. up and hire my models and just have them there and pay him enough money to they're dangling on the little yeah. wire yeah, yeah, exactly. he's a photographer I forgot he does these pr- production photographs like build yeah. sets for like one shot uh-huh. I forgot his name there's, I think there's a documentary on Netflix about him um, I ah. think um, there's a um, there's a few of them yeah there's a well they're coming out with a, a documentary soon about the Wiccan brothers do you know who they are mm-hmm. Um, Jerome Witkin is an amazing painter, um, realist painter. I think they're both on the East Coast. And uh, Joel Witkin is his brother, who is an amazing photographer. And he sets up these crazy, almost um, these really sort of dark subject matter in both of their work. Mm-hmm. Um, but he, they both um, do these really intricate, they're both very intricate in their artwork. And the way that um, Joel Witkin is intricate in his work is the setup of everything. Mm-hmm. Just do that. And I... Uh, I guess in the ideal situation, I'd love to bring some more of that into my art, uh, and, like set it up in a way where I can like actually paint it realistically. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm gonna try and do more of that. Just like at least come up with the ideas, even if I'm not able to execute them at, yeah, at, yeah. at a given time. But just the, just like thinking ahead and like you know who knows maybe I will get to a point where I can at least execute one of these paintings. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I guess artistically, like, I'm wondering wh- how I'm limiting myself because um, I don't have the resources for it. So, like, think smaller so I'm not, like, disappointed. Or, like, Eight you know. by ten. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> two by two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, like, you know, there's people like that, uh, the book you showed me, Zav, the sketch artist who just does all these amazing ink drawings and stuff out of his French. head. He's not limited by by resources. So he just come up like just uses imagination more and just mm. yeah. need to do that more <laughs> mm-hmm. just so when the time comes and i have that david cho money i can pull out these oh, yeah. <laughs> i've been practicing for this yeah exactly <laughs> so uh Zha, i guess you're up yeah. well i guess the teacher in me and mm-hmm. i guess will always be the teacher in me yeah uh i i would actually 
a, a start a, a giant school and it will be tuition free because <laughs> I wouldn't need to charge anybody anything right. because I'm rich. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And but I, I and 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 I would be a snob. I wouldn't allow really great people in because I need to train the rest of the people <laughs> to catch up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, um, no, it's not so much as it's a school, but. It's more like a place like where a people can for grow. Learning, almost, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That I really, really, I really think that in the long run, it's almost like an I would academy in the traditional yeah. sense, where it's like people come to learn a free work. But it would be way like to an make us look like monsters. Uh, we're like blowing sorry. money on <laughs> yay, yeah. cranes and paint, yeah. 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 <laughs> big production sets. Yeah. Yeah. All, all around me. the universe, all, all around the freaking world. And then Zaz goes, I just went to little school. Yeah, little kid, little poor kids want to learn how to. Paint. <laughs> you'll be you'll be Professor Z instead of Professor yeah. X. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I like that. Professor Z. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I really think that that's School really cool. Gifted. I <laughs> well, yeah, of course, you're gonna like like you're gonna somehow like incorporate their talent, and w- when they go off into the world, you'll well, that, get some royalty, the, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. so well, you like trains this fleet of uh, yeah. yeah artists. You know, one of the things that I've always felt I made you. <laughs> <laughs> you're so you're right. You do sound like the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like somebody else I mean, that we were talking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? <laughs> so um, we're off the podcast. Yeah. Okay. So uh, no, I, I I don't need it. Like I said, I don't need a lot. I I would like to do, to to travel uh, maybe three out of the four season. Yeah. And then spend yeah. that one extra season in that location, giving back. And I would like to do that mm. for as long as I can, if money wasn't an issue. Because right. I feel like. Um, um, Dimar, I think that's Dipmar, one of the professors when I went to school, he wasn't my teacher full time, but Mm -hmm. he made an impact on me in that he said, you know, with, it's kind of like that Spider-Man thing with great, Mm -hmm. what gives comes great responsibility or great great powers. Yeah. Not that I have any power, but rather if you have anything that you've learned that you feel is worthy to pass on. Amazing cooking. Cooking. (laughs) (laughs) Then, then you gotta, On your you gotta bed, share. You go, Sergio, oh, I give my... you my lob. <laughs> <laughs> I give you all my lob from my heart. Yeah, exactly. I pass the man. Do you mean love? Yeah. No, lob. Lob. It's better than love. <laughs> yeah. It's lob. You can eat lob. You can't eat love. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's funny. Yeah, so that's what I would like to do if, if money a, wasn't an amazing. option. And and I would actually even love to do it here in the United States because this yeah. is my home. I wouldn't yeah. want to do it in Paris or <laughs> or wherever it is that sure. I would eventually want to travel. So I see I, I am greedy too. I do want to travel. Mm. That's and, good. Uh, yeah. Very cool. How would that would that like uh change like the way you paint though? Like what would you do? I would, or would experiment. you just change I, or you keep like, teaching the same thing? No, I well the thing is, when I teach, I was just telling Sergio this, I don't teach them to paint like me. I just teach mm-hmm. them to explore with their own gifts, mm-hmm. their voice. And so that that process or that theory or that practice of teaching is something that I would like to cultivate and, and, and pass on to, mm-hmm. to the next generation. If yeah. they, they feel like they need to explore and paint like a Gauguin or, or a sergeant or something, I will find the best teacher to 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 give them that opportunity to explore. But I wouldn't necessarily tell them how to. Right. I know somebody who paints like Sargent. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Uh, but but so many of us so paint many, like Sargent. Such an inside joke. I'm sorry, everybody. No. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Uh, that that, that sounds really question. cool, Za. I would actually... I would and send then I would call my... upon all my friends to come and volunteered to teach Absolutely. and give back yeah. mm. you know Sergio be mentor the poor little kid Sergio would hire for his production set <laughs> he'd probably he'd recommend to go to your school <laughs> yeah exactly probably you it's need to person. learn how to so yeah. just like I'm hey, tired like of me, feeding so you you, to Zah. Mm-hmm. you wanna be like me go to Zah school <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're too funny well, Serge, this has been a pleasure. Yeah, thanks yeah. for having us, man. Yeah, thank thanks, you. man. This was a blast. Yeah, I'm glad that we finally got this going. Yeah. yeah. So, I think it's time for a swim. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah you absolutely. Get, that, After all that, that talking it up. Yeah. <laughs> Anna's getting the floaties. <laughs> yeah. Don't and lose food. this one. Don't yeah. lose this one, honey. <laughs> or else we'll have to come do a, a follow up podcast of how we lost the. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Another <laughs> donut. <laughs> yeah. Another one, but the water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, everybody. This has been Waiting to Dry. 
Josh isn't here to tell you to fuck off, so I will. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>